Like Babylon and generates V8 with clear sense, uncommon. Can you see straight? Freeze frames by the blocks in the deep state. Deep fake DNA. I'm mobbing with the think tank. Be on the block with the guards where the beats done. What makes it loud for a log? Get your beats stung. Freeze frame, make it hard for bombers roll through. That hating energy get bought for QB bone. You work a third every day to get the same. Yeah, we got just like the murderers and rapists that you claim. I This is your man, Peace Solo Prince Solomon is in the building, ladies and gentlemen. What is good with you all? What is good with you all, too, by the way? Listen, this here, uh, first and foremost, a round of applause for you all. Of course, we showed up. <sighs> to let it be known, we are in the building. Listen, this is definitely going to be shaping out to be a very interesting fight that's going to be taking place. There seems to be a little bit more to the story than meets the eye. So we have to get right into it, ladies and gentlemen. How you all are feeling in the chat, too, to get everybody out there? I'm glad you're here. Also, let y'all know all the political conversations on Candace being kicked to the curb by the hypocritical Daily Wire, what took place in Moscow, all the things that's happening in global politics and locally in the USA will be talked about on Patreon 
on Dark Crimes Patreon. So if y'all want to hear it, go over there, support us, support the movement. But today, this stream will be about Drake being evicted from ATL and possibly by hip hop. All right, so listen, listen, there's more than meets the eye. Think about it real quick, y'all. We got to get right into the situation. Look, I know people are saying, well, you know, I can't wait to see what J. Cole's going to do. Again, shouts out to the Gym Sock Kids, all right? The Gym Sock Kids. Yeah, that's the, I mean, J. Cole definitely represents, he's holding it down for the Gym Sock crew. But St. Nicholas of the South, a.k.a. Future Hendrix, has let it be known that we're not messing with Drake. Matter of fact, think about everybody that has collectively, if you had a chance to listen to Metro Boomin' and uh, Future's most recent effort, which I think is a very good album, by the way. It's got all of the wonderful um, esoteric knowledge and the endoteric knowledge of the legendary Dead Scorpio himself, Prodigy, one half of the legendary group, Mob Deep. So there's some interesting things going on there. But Future and Metro Boomin', Metro Boomington, is letting it be known that they do not trust Drake. We don't trust him. We don't trust him. We don't trust him. No more. We don't trust No, no. All right. So is, listen, listen. Let's get into the politics side of the game. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they trust Drake, ladies and gentlemen, in the chat? Because you heard what Future said on the, the album. Man, this can't be about no woman because we all share it. What is this really about? What is this really about, ladies and gentlemen? How is it that, ironically or unironically, the Negroes that are not messing with him right now, behind St. Nicholas of the South, is it's that of the 404 area code, Atlanta. I mean, look, I mean, rest in peace. Take off, anyone? Take, take off is definitely the condom sale or the thing that that really right. sealed the deal you know drake on her life and all that was mob ties mob ties and mob uh i just don't think a lot of people liked or enjoyed what happened with take off and yeah. you know how it involved possibly possibly or allegedly you know the prince sons and just whatever yeah, took place out. down in houston texas and uh you know drake kept repping mob ties on her loss and for my dog so I think a lot of people from Atlanta, you know, Quavo, Offset, Future, Metro, a lot of them are, it seems like they, they want to evict Drake from the music scene altogether and that they're tired of him. Now, to be fair, even when Drake first came out, the opinions of a lot of the guys from ATL wasn't wasn't like they really liked him like, like that. Like when you first saw Quavo and take off opinion of Drake, they was like, he all right. When you first heard Future, Future said, I make better music. My, my people feel the music more than me. They feel my music more, you know? And, you know, so it was a lot of people's first impressions. Even look at 21 Savage, who's uh, partly from the UK. You know, he even said... Man, you they, know, they just don't feel like it. Right. They don't, they don't, they, man, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, they, 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 that, they can't read. They're not going to mess with Drake. So initially, but. a lot of them felt that he was forced into the ATL market anyway. And uh, a lot of them, you know, capitulated to doing work with Drake because it was it was lucrative. Well, there was a bag behind it. I mean, you have Jay Prince of the South. Look, I know, folks, you know, I mean, if you listen to a lot of the commentary online, you know, the people are hung up about, oh, this is over woman. I'm going to tell you something real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all niggas keep stop, fucking stop. around, fucking around, fuck around, get stuck in the ground. Be out of your mind if you believe all of this is over a girl. You know how many women are in Atlanta? You know how many women are in Houston? I mean, the last time we seen Future really get twisted up like this about a woman was none other than Sierra. But outside of that, do you really believe chat? Come on, you all. Not with Do you really believe this is over a woman? Not with Fat Neck Ye running around. Come on now. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, that's another side of the game. Remember, Kanye West... Kanye West. That's a slave name, Prince. He yeah. said, don't call me by that no more. It's yay. All right. So Kanye West. <laughs> you got to remember. You got to remember Kanye West is still a thorn in Drake's side. Kanye West, also an individual born in Atlanta, raised in Chicago. Remember when he rolled out the Donda campaign, it was at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. 
Now, if you look at the people that were recently in the video concerning Future, who do we have there? Playboy Cardi, we have Future, Future Hendrix, right? We have some other subsidiaries out there. Uh, pretty much, for the most part, kind of just trolling Drake at this point in time. Now, I know there's some footage of Drake coming out to Savages and people are saying, you know, what is this about? But listen, if you look at the marketing campaign for We Don't Trust You, it's already, like they said, it's already been sent up. I, I agree. And look, two things could be true, people. Not everybody is jealous of Drake. I don't think Future is jealous of Drake. Are y'all right that when Drake was a happy, lucky go guy saying he loved everybody at the beginning of the first three years of the game, were people hating on him, throwing yeah. pee on him, being evil? Yes. And if y'all have sympathy for those first three years of his career, you can have at it. But... Drake himself has done some shisty stuff like sleeping with DJ Drama's girl, sleeping with Lil Wayne's woman at the time when he was in prison. So it's more of a mixed bag here. It's not like, and nobody in this, this setup is completely clean or completely dirty. There's some things that you could put in Drake's favor that you could say maybe was unfair, but there's things you could put in other guys' favors too as well. So this is why we're here just to, to talk about the battle and enjoy what's to come and to talk about different plays. But go ahead, Prince. No, you're absolutely right about that. So keep this in mind. Look, first and foremost, we know that Drake constantly gets in trouble behind women. Now you mean to tell me out uh, of all of these years that, oh my God, oh, now Drake has a problem with future. Oh, now I'm gonna diss him, right? They're claiming about the M's, it has to do with future. Then the album uh, for all the frogs, whatever it is, he had the song on there, What Would Pluto Do? And I mean, it, look, it, it was a weird record, but we're at this point now where, think about it. Drake was just going off on Metro Boomin', right? Metro Boomin' was sticking some jabs back. Then, of course, DJ Black Academics comes out and he's talking about to Metro Boomin, you need to just make sure you grieve properly over your dead mama. Which right? I, I think that's right? going to get uh, academics Well, killed. you got to say that on the Patreon. Oh, I'm sorry. Pim, pim. I'm, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying some of the things academics are saying about people's dead moms, it, I think it's... I think you got to be careful with that. Especially if you have to travel about the country. And I don't mean like being careful with talking about rappers. Everybody is free to express what you want about anybody. We joke about people all the time. But when you go after people's moms and stuff and they didn't make it that personal with you, just be prepared for blowback. Now, listen to the album. If you guys had a chance to listen to the album, uh, We Don't Trust You, I actually think it's Future Hendrix's best album behind Dirty Sprite 2. Yeah, so far. I mean, right. Dirty Sprite 2 is just... Sierra, thank you for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank right. you. Thank you. Uh... And, and, now, <laughs> thank and you. ironically, in both instances, Future apparently is severing a relationship with a Scorpio. Yeah, you can tell there's you know? some intimacy there because was it as intimate as Sierra? Of course not because he was actually having sex with Sierra. Uh, because I actually think that Future is one of the few heterosexual guys in hip-hop. But... Um... <laughs> <laughs> he is, I'm just saying. He just seemed like one of the few th that's in there right now. But yeah, um, niggas keep fucking around. I think there was a form of friendship slash associates with uh, Drake, and that's you can hear the emotion in it with the first track. We don't trust you, so you know. I just think also the takeoff a situation as we talked about. It, it was the last straw that broke the camel's uh, back and then people didn't like the fact that he partnered up with 21 Savage Kodak Black from Florida came out saying we were supposed to do an album Future came out and like we were supposed to collaborate and you did something with 21 Savage at this point people only saw Drake as a lick uh, as a bag to flip and I think for them if he ain't flipping no bags we don't want to deal with him no more listen let's be real a lot of Negroes were forced to deal with Drake can I say that, y'all? I mean, how do you feel about a Canadian? Shouts out to my Canadians. Shouts out to them, by the way. Just yeah. give you a round of applause, you guys, right? We, yeah, I support the show. Love you all. But we're not talking about Canadians. We're not talking about people that are listening to us from Ontario or Saskatchewan. I'm not talking about you all, right? And more tune for your head top, so watch how you speak on my name. All right, all right Drake. Okay, let me finish. All right, look. Think about it, though. As I said before on Twitter, when Drake is at his worst... He's making T new Dirty Sprite 2 music. Think about it. Lean, 
quote unquote, sliming bitches out. This is all Timu oil, Timu emu oil, Timu TikTok rap gangster music knockoff versions of not only Future Hendrix but that of YSL. Now, yeah, for my dogs was a bootleg Dirty Sprite too. Not as good. It, yeah, Drake right. is superior in other ways when he yeah. does that on other styles. But I agree through the. When he does, when he try to compete with Future against Future own style, it doesn't work. That's why Future says you're my biggest fan. I know everybody like to go back and forth with Kendrick. You can argue between Drake and Kendrick as far as bar for bar lyricists in the department, but as far as the influence goes, can't can't compete with Warlock. You can't compete with Baron Lacroix. You can't. You've been all in Atlanta, Drake. You didn't recruit it, not a general of Atlanta, but a celebrated soldier in Atlanta, 21 Savage. 21 Savage does not have a high rank in the future in the ATL. This album that Future has released along with the maestro himself, the conductor, Metro Boomington, is better than Drake's last three projects. Oops, did I say that? Can I, I can't. And more truth I, I know, head listen, talk, so I'm sorry. My name, you know? I, I know, I'm not trying to put nothing on your name. I'm not trying to put smut on your name, Aubrey. But you have been slacking and lacking. Now, you recruited 21 Savage in this little scorpionic war and you tried to use him as a pawn because let's be real. Let's be real. He wants Savage gonna go back over there with feet. 21 Savage was a mailman on that album. He was he was he was using you as a lick Drake. I mean none of these None of these niggas over here from Chicago, Atlanta, Florida, all of them have been using you as a lick. And uh, this goes back to what we reported in 2015, yes. 2017. So yes. we talked about the heart part five where we said K-Dot was supposed to smoke Drake, but he changed his mind. And then we had Night Night on when, uh, our last stream. We Shouts talked about Night Night. the heart part six is coming out. Yes. Where he is going to lead, he's going to finish where Pusha T started. But remember, this is if, if for people who believe in astrology and also be more talk about the Rena cycle. All the people that we said wanted smoke with Drake like seven years ago, they're here, are back again to finish the fucking job. Y'all niggas keep fucking around, fucking around, yeah, fucking around, and, get stuck in the ground. And instead of Drake building an army of niggas who truly fuck with him that don't just consider him a lick. He went back to his, I got enemies, got a lot of enemies, and put more money in their pockets. Thank you for boosting and taking care of the Atlanta economy, Drake. But this is what Drake sounds like right now. But we talking about practice, man. What are we talking about? We're talking about practice. Practice? Hey, listen. Listen, here's the thing about it. Ladies and gentlemen, and I love you, Aubrey friends. Keep voting for your king, your snow walker. People got tight about us because I'm going to give it to you. I, I do feel, I'm going to be honest with you all, I, I felt we introduced the best commentary at the time. I'm not well, I'm not stunning on anybody else, but I, as far as, I think m one of the more electrifying commentary concerning Drake and Pusha T. Cindy and I, we're going to walk this down together, all right? Without a stick, because we're not, we're not J. Cole. <laughs> it's not three stacks, well, right? He, now. Yeah, okay. I was going to say one more thing. Can you remind me of something? Go ahead and say that. Kendrick Lamar is a trap. Yes. Like a trap. that. Uh, what? What? Yeah. It, right. Go ahead. Drake, if you ain't, you have to get rid of your enemies, your backstabbers yeah. in your camp before you go up against anybody here or you're going to lose. Because when Pusha T did infrared, you did not clean up your camp. You got backstabbed, mm. your T was put out there, mm. and you lost with the story of Adidon and and uh, J Prince sat you down. Now this time around, we got another appetizer, and it's Kendrick like that. And also back then they were going against your Adidas cash, and they destroyed that deal. Well, guess what? Like that, and another track on uh, we don't trust you. Two of the tracks are saying they're going after your Nike deal, your Nike check. So if your ass playing the same check of games that you did before or getting sat down again, your career is going to be over. I I'm just want to say, so Kendrick is a trap. I'm, I'm going to give you another one for Drake. Because look, don't, no, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Ain't nobody, you know, in the 
power 105 circles or kicking it with the hot 97 niggas or we ain't on clubhouse y'all know they kicked us off i don't know what the hell i guess because we was doing too much i don't know you know all we did was roast tom hank's son to his face <laughs> look here's the thing about it whether drake knows it or not the campaign has already begun they already put out there that Drake is sensitive because between the idea of the two Scorpios about getting e that emotion over a woman, people will automatically default think it's the light-skinned Canadian. <laughs> oh, Drake must have got this. He must have got mad about a woman. So, man, he gonna cut off. He gonna cut off future Hendrix this way? Like, bro, that's, it's, you going too far, dog. That's what people are already saying, Drake. They already saying that you got some stuff started behind a scripper shouting. Right? Like, they said, did, does Drake have an understanding of life? They don't even, they don't have shit figured out yet. Right? Then, like Sincere said, like we talked about it last time, you got too many moles in your camp. Secret Asian man, secret right? Asian Come on now. man. What we doing? Now, people can say what they want to say. If you want to say that Drake can borrow up with Kenny, Kung Fu Kenny, Compton Kenny, condom kenny whatever you want to say let it be that but here's the thing about chess well drake if you guys pay attention it's in you know we said well why is he running around with ice spice <laughs> why is he running around with sexy red why is he running around with yachty why isn't he running around with the true a-listers and all-stars well apparently in the nigga kingdom there has been some disruptions now they just said they had a video of Drake recently walking down to his show to perform with Dirk. And I always said it feels like Drake has been trying to force an energy out of Dirk that you would think you would get out of future. We all know Dirk is not a good artist. No, that's that's the thing that's missing from Dirk. Like that's why Vaughn and Dirk worked so well because right. Dirk was the savvy business nigga and Vaughn just had it. He, I know he's a criminal nigga, but you know he had it. And uh, Drake is a, he, he's put into a position where he don't have no real wingman. The weekend don't fuck with him. That Nav nigga that did the back to back beat don't fuck with him. Rick Ross don't fuck with him. And he didn't spend the time to build out his own squad because he was trying to be too down with people who don't even like him. And this is also not us illustrating a sad story for Drake because I get, again he did things that were wrong too, you know and. Um, a lot of people feel right now that they want to tighten up against people that they don't feel are is hip hop. Now I get the hypocrisy. Some of them still talk about European whips. Some of them still talking against black women or trying to say other women are better looking than black women. So you still got a lot of the niggas being hypocritical. But where it is that they uh, allegedly the the fake story sin is that they're not fighting over a black woman. Continue. Right. But at the end of the day, some people feel that. Drake is not one of us because you know what the other side he is and you know what yay the campaign he has started up so this is a financial war this is a music real estate war this is a spiritual war that these guys are in right now and it's quite interesting to see what takes place because back then seven years ago Kendrick Lamar said he wanted Drake up out of the game. Niggas sharing, sharing bars. Like a two-man cell. Like a two-man cell. Woo. You had mm, the OGs trying to get rid of Drake. Now, they the OGs took their shot. Pusher and, and Fat, uh, Fat Neck Ye, which severely injured, severely injured Drake. And at the time, a lot of his peers still didn't go after him because they felt... He was still strong enough to make them some dough. Now that Drake Vitality has gone down, he's running around with Sexy Red. He's bloated. A lot of the guys are feeling like seven years later, this is the time to strike again. And this is a, another Wyoming setup. It's another Wyoming setup that if he doesn't take precaution to respond the right way, him and Cole, they both gonna get put up out of here, but more more well, so, so Drake. more so Drake than Cole. Drake is clearly he's clearly the white buffalo. Look, don't get me, don't get me. I'm not. Do 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 do. Don't don't talk about me. I'm just saying he's clearly the white because 
listen to the samples on the album. That's why Joe Budden was irritated. You heard what he said. I don't like all these fucking niggas. I think what Joe Budden does is does an excellent fucking job. Keep doing what you're doing, nigga. <laughs> but when I heard him cursing about Travis Scott, cricket face, eggplant head, Travis Scott. He looked like Curse the Cowardly Dog. I was like, oh, <laughs> Travis does look. Hey, man, you replay that shit. Do 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 now. now, when I heard Joe Budden cursing about I said, well, why is Joe Budden so angry? Because we understand whether people want to accept it or not. Drake is a stepchild of Joe Budden's pen game lyrically. And Future and them know that. That's right? why they diss Joe Budden too. If you go back to mood music, right? As Sin used to say um, ignorantly early on in Thought Crawls, she used to say, that's moo moo music, right? Yeah, shout out to Joe Budden. Right, but if you go listen to Mood Music Series Volume One to Fifteen, right, clearly, clearly has an inspiration in Drake's career. That Fonte, a South legend such as Zero, right, Zero the Crooked, right. So when I was like, "What? What the fuck is Joe Budden?" Then I heard the Prodigy clips, and the Prodigy clips were the clips when he was dissing Joe Budden. Now, Joe Budden did give Prodigy that work lyrically. He did respond on uh, the In Route album slash mixtape with Amalgam Digital, right? But that's hip hop history. That's another time. But anyway, that being the case, you know, Joe Budden did respond. But when I heard the clips, I was like, oh, okay. I, I could see I could see that. Because Joe Budden says, I hate all these little fucking niggas. Da, 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 da. Be because, <laughs> because no offense to Drake, but because Joe Budden is American, yeah. Joe Button knows when a nigga don't like him. He knows when a nigga's <laughs> activated. Do, 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 do. He know when in the subconscious of the spirit, the black nigga just don't like him. Right. And he let them niggas know, I don't like you either. This is my space. Y'all can have your space. The problem with Drake being Canadian, even though his dad is from Memphis, He can't Tennessee, read the room. When he feels the hate, he go back into the same fucking room. You mean he goes back to old Canada? Yeah, like... Hey, like, how you doing? You're a nice guy. That's just Drake. Come on, brother. They don't like you. They, they don't, don't like, like you. you. <laughs> what did Candace Owens say? The government not like us. <laughs> Drake, the, the nigga government does not like you. Drake, get this out of your blood. You can't do nothing with... Let me tell you something right now. Let me be abundantly in the name of Jesus clear. There is no nigga. I'll say this again. There is no nigga you can partner with right now on the microphone. There's no nigga you can walk down the arena with. There's no nigga that can fuck with what Future is doing down there in the Southeast. Shit, he gave he right? gave he gave Megan the Stallion a positive shout out before you. Drake, what you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to take your half black ass into the studio, nigga. With some Memphis, Tennessee beats. And what I suggest you do, because some folks in your camp was all in our messages and getting tight. And I said, get out of my message, immigrant. <laughs> get the do, fuck do, do, out do. of my in. Pim, pim. Get out of my DMs, nigga. You, you stay, stay the, the hell away, away from me here. here. All right. Shouts out to the immigrants. But listen, you're going to have to take your ass, nigga. I'm going to be honest with you, fucking Drake. And get your ass in that fucking studio. And you're going to have to break the horns off the five foot four demon of the left coast. Because if you don't do that, nigga. Your career's over. You're fucking over. And hip hop. The time. southern niggas right now are having a trade embargo on you. And I told you, niggas, when we was on the stream, Atlanta did not appreciate that takeoff shit. It was a very sad situation. And, and no one understood. No one to this day understands why it even happened why was it a contract that don't take off like nobody understands what the fuck took place even people who may not like quavo or may not like offset may have had beef with people over there at the end of the day they still like why did this take off shit happen and Drake, you seemed a bit cold about the situation, and even though you went to the funeral, and a lot of people don't like that. And we said that in a stream before, when we did a stream about it, you know, 
you got J Prince set you down with Pusha T, and we thought, man, J Prince is not a good strategic move. Even though Drake is pop, he is still also your biggest rap hip hop. And then when you went on the uh, campaign to, to share your book, you said, well, Drake is, I didn't really think his music was really hip hop. I'm like, what the fuck was that? What? Like, it's like J Prince, bro. You got you, a microphone haircut. You Why make, are we listening to him? No, but he making his, his boy look like a bitch. Here's the thing about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Sam. No, I just wanted to say, say that, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, you ahead. you deep powering Drake when he was at this his is, most powerful. This is definitely a pro woman channel. You know, <laughs> go ahead. You sister, know, speak. I'm just I'm just speak, saying. <laughs> speak beautiful, black queen. Go ahead, get that shit out of your you chest. You know, so it's just like Jay yeah. Prince, man. You you making your most your most you deep powered your most your most powerful asset. And I get it for politics because you know bone crushing all this other stuff. You know the mob ties from Chicago and all that. But at the end of the day. I don't know if it was worth the fact that now your boy Drake may be completely pushed out of the hip hop market. I'll say this and I'll say this one more time. As someone that was raised in Atlanta, I am telling you, they're not going to, they're not going to get right back at you like a New Yorker. A New Yorker is going to curse you out in the middle of the street. Right? A Cali nigga is going to lie. And walk off and hit you from the side. That's why I, I fuck with Cali niggas though. They make me laugh. I don't trust nothing they say. I, actually, the only the only person from Cali I trust is Brandy Kane. Outside of that, I don't, I don't trust. Shout no, out to the uh, wonderful citizens of right, Crenshaw. Because I uh, Cali niggas do. do and got like, some billions. Yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of dope people. No, there's there. a lot of. And dope I got people. family over there. So no, you know, I know, but that's why you know. when you revealed you was from the West Coast, some people in the chat said they don't trust you no more. They I'm don't not trust from the West you Coast. no more. <laughs> Don't let Sin lie to you. She was from Cali. Right? So anyway, listen. Drake, you have to understand. This is America. And I said this before. One thing I noticed, not about black men from other countries. Black men who come from other countries and try to out niggify the black American nigga male. You can't do it. The only one that can out niggify the black American nigga male is the niggerella. That's pew, it. Pew, pew. And that's the black American woman. But Drake didn't understand that and he kept Y'all nigga keep fucking around, fucking right. around, fuck around, get stuck in the ground. Now here's the thing. Think about it, you all reasonably. You, you don't think this is you don't think this is you think this is a coincidence that the city of Atlanta, the Migos represented it. Now look, I'm not saying this specifically that. Okay? I'm You're not saying right. that. You know, but what I'm saying is it's adding to a reason to say we don't trust. Who the fuck are we? <laughs> who who are we? Atlanta? Who, who's we? We don't we? trust you no more. Who, who is we? We don't trust you. You got the weekend on there. You got Metro booming. You got your own Canadian men and out the, there. This is what's so sneaky about the upright toxic Scorpio known as Future, right? Look what this nigga is doing with the sound bites all through the album. This is a hit piece. He's saying on the album with Prodigy, a dead Scorpio. Dead Scorpio. Uh, shouts out to, I believe her name is Santana Fox. If I recall correct, she's a dope producer. That is Prodigy's daughter. I follow her on, we follow her on Instagram. She's a dope producer, Santana Fox. She does great work. But look, remember when Prodigy was going after Joe Budden, but also on a bigger level, what was Prodigy, before they squashed their beef, but what was Prodigy saying about Jay-Z? It's that corporate hip hop. The street niggas don't fuck with him like that. And he survived and because you, he still was an American nigga. Yeah, what'd he say? <laughs> what'd he say? What did, what did Prodigy say on this album, right? Because there's really three people on this album. It's Metro, it's Future, and then there's Prodigy. Right? The ghost of Prodigy is all... The, the haunting spirit of Prodigy is all on this album. And it, it is indicting Drake because what is he saying? You know, fake niggas. Future saying, you trying to be me. You trying to be us. You're a weirdo. You're lame. The streets don't fuck with you. Uh-oh. Now, listen. I told people before. Drake is at his strongest when he's being honest and speaking from the heart about his emotions in life and how he wrestles with his masculinity and being able to move around and, and women and heartbreak. And, and then when somebody, you know, say, hey, Drake, I think you soft. He gave him a back to back. Drake has been releasing garbage knockoff T-Moo 
Dirty Sprite 2 music for the last three to four albums. Yeah, it's like he don't understand. People like when Drake do uh, light and dark at the same time or just light. Mm -hmm. So when he does Hotline Bling, which is just light, he get all the women. Even the people who make fun of him really like him. Then when he did, uh, if you're reading this, it's too late, which was merged with dark and light energy. People like him. When Future goes all the way dark, we love it. Dirty Sprite 2, when his heart was broken from the Sierra relationship and he gave us that classic uh, uh, shadow album, we loved it. Just like we loved this uh, this uh, piece with him and Metro Boomin once again. Because we know, I wouldn't say his heart, his heart is heartbroken like Sierra, nah, but it's still you can still feel some disappointment and he's giving us great music. You know, and we know we could count on Future to give us some good music when he is angry or sad or something like that, right? Right now, Drake, you've been taking an L on your last couple of albums. And on top of that, Drake, Future got a hot roster right now. He got Kendrick. He got Metro, who's one of the greatest producers right now. Metro Boomer. You don't, you don't got Travis Scott because he's two-faced. You helped him out there with his debacle on stage, and he still stabbed you in the back. <laughs> you don't even have Nav. You don't have The Weeknd. Like, the, the lineup that the people who are pro-future is looking like a hot roster right now. The only person you got that is dope when he feels like it is J. Cole. Because like what Prince said, Dirk ain't going to give you no great music. Uh, Sexy Red ain't gonna give you no great music. The only person you got that can put out some fire shit is J. Cole. But you're gonna need more than that. And like Prince said, look, if it's just gonna be you and K. Cole, uh, uh, J. Cole, you're gonna have to get some fire-ass beats from Memphis, Tennessee, from Chicago, from Houston. You're not getting it from Atlanta because you already excommunicated out of there. But you're gonna have to really figure this shit out because if you try to rely on some little nigga you gonna you again you're gonna big l yeah because right now drake is running with a trash roster i can't say it. what what's all these dirty deep pooty tang niggas he's running with sexy red what, what is this the fellas are not messing with it and, and, and let me let me be clear about something to clear here when 21 Savage, who face looks dirty even after he cleans it, when he says the hood niggas th- 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 Drake, he, he is like a hood hillbilly. <laughs> he is speaking from a trap hillbilly's perspective. <laughs> now, the average, I'd say, black guy or woman that just like you know, I kind of want to hear something more than what Drake is offering. Why is Drake running around here with Yachty? and his gap bell bottom pants <laughs> all you know and then think about this you all let me tell you the reason why drake is getting molly whopped right now you can't first of all nigga i'm gonna be i'm gonna I'm be honest with you as far as ethereal energy because clearly future has an influence over drake absolutely a- absolutely this all of this i slime the bitch out lean and all this stuff this is all copycat future music that's why i said i wasn't listening to nothing he had to offer then the other side is this drake has been an embarrassment Damn. he has been an embarrassment when he tucked his tail up concerning Pusha t and he told us i'm good on it my g i'm big dog status the culture we bitched but i did say look if you can if you can sleep at night we gave you a year my nigga you still didn't put it out but you kept talking about the same thing on every album like mike jones you kept repeating yourself even on trader Travis scott you you said you're talking about this america you love this american shit yeah but but you still was speaking on, on on a track of somebody that was going who was using you as a lick. Hey, you know what? That nigga probably laughed at that nigga. <laughs> they did. They did. They did. They you know? laugh at Drake. And let me tell you another side of it. Drake got sat down with the Pusha T battle. N- nothing fruitful came from it. It isn't like Drake and Kanye came together on some Watch the Throne shit and they made a classic album behind their union. I mean, shit, at least with Jay-Z and Nas, we got Black Republican, 
we got some other records success and some other stuff we even got the joint with Ludacris, nas and jay-z look when jay-z and nas shook hands we got some beautiful art behind it we didn't get nothing from drake right. and kanye from being forced to shake hands behind the likes of the godfather of the south jay prince yeah. then on top of that yeah. just to say this in real no, quick like, go ahead, cook. you want it around here with Kim Moore Lee, Lee Press on Nails. And with Aiden Ross, who nobody in the culture gives a fuck about Aiden nobody Ross. Nobody cares. When Aiden Ross said Kendrick Lamar's diss towards Drake is corny, I said, Who are you? Your whole existence is corny. Who are you, Broccoli Top? <laughs> With a perm. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> a permed out broccoli top. You yeah. got a, 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 a fake nigga haircut, fake nigga clothes, yeah. and you think uh, that you have some say so say, whether niggas cool. beef or not, not and get into a real rap battle. Yeah, That's tough. another issue that Drake has. You got too many. Drake, look, Drake has a public circle of lames. Let's break the lames down. He's got Yachty, lame, sexy red is honestly to the culture for drake to be parading her around it's Point lame up. it's lame shit it's let's just call can we be honest can we be honest because uh, ladies i'm calling the men and women lame but let me just be honest it's lame shit right then you're over there with aiden ross who got robbed with holes in his uno cards then a nigga with a hockey mask took money from him live on the feet. Drake, you're running around with a dejected bootleg Arthur Skeeter Doug set. Uh, a Aiden Ross was uh, drooling over your dick video. Aiden Ross. Well, say that again. Wasn't that so weird? That he was... called him. Man, I saw your shaft. Man, it's like if it wasn't even all the way hard. If it was hard, oh, that dick would have been like 12 fucking inches. What? And then he sniffed Andrew Tate's taste oh come on man he sniffed andrew tate seats Seat. like bro that's it's, it's, you going too far dog what, so what and, are we you running around with these niggas and, and and also some people will get us about it look we know yadi and sexy red are american we know they're going to be fine no matter what if they don't end up dead or something of course yeah we're just having two categories of lane Aiden Ross is all the way lame, and we're talking about who can help Drake in the musical battle. It won't be Yachty, and it won't be Sexy Red. Now, they can help them help probably with media campaign, like go on some podcasts and interviews. Yachty is actually pretty funny when he's just talking on the podcast and shit, but musically, ain't nothing he could bring. Nothing he could bring there. Let's keep it 100. Listen, and, and, and just be real. Shouts out to Night Night in the chat, too, by the way. But I, I, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you all. Drake is looking lame right now. That's why everybody feels like this is the perfect time. And we said it before. When Drake sat there and allowed himself to be sat down by the likes of Jay Prince and, and, and all this other stuff concerning the culture. People people say, oh, well, he's, he's doing this for this, that, and a third. Look. You should got something out of it though too. He didn't get anything. Yeah, you didn't even get nothing out he of it. He got clowned and he's clearly hurt. He's he's clearly hurt. Now, the other side of it is this. Look, I don't have nothing against the Jamaican, but let's be real. They're receiving bad advice. I you know, academics. Look, academics likes rap music. He likes rap music, it's cool. But I'm gonna be honest with you all. It's not really looking good for Drake. Now, are we saying he can't turn things around? No, we're not saying that, but we're saying realistically, why is this happening? Because I hear everybody talking online, don't give me that bullshit about some woman that was clapping her ass cheeks in both of these niggas' faces. You gotta remember, this is an industry where more than one man sleeps with one woman at the same time the same night same hour same day yeah. industry niggas a hundred niggas will sleep with the same hoe come like, on now like, like come on so you look look what future said it ain't about that because we, we we shared a couple weeks ago I told y'all it's a freak party <laughs> freak hoes right <laughs> folks the album is called we don't trust you we don't trust you no more. who who's the king of atlanta Future, Future is the only one who could, cause look, 
even Benny the Butcher was doing that debauchery shit when he went with Freddie Gibbs girl and put a chain and nobody's into that no more Future is the only guy in hip hop right now that can go full debauchery but give you a little bit of heart in there in the underworld and people like this shit is beautiful nobody likes it when Drake's go full dark no. semi mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you know I go 0 to 100 nigga real quick semi with hot bars the men and the women, we appreciate it. But when Drake tries to do all the way demon time on some future Hendrix shit, we hate it. Yes. That the tattoo on the eye, the <laughs> the fucking ugly beads in the hair. It's not believable. You know, you uglying yourself up because of niggas don't like you. And, and and Prince and I keep it 100 Just like we told Megan the Stallion To stand up for herself Even though we wasn't picking sides We like Megan, we like Nikki But we gonna tell both sides how we see it And we said Megan Stand your ass up yeah. Go take a mental health break you sound and, like then, you trying to be funny. and then when you come back Stop being nice and stand up for yourself And she did with his So now Nikki moved on to harass Lotto <laughs> But we telling Drake the same shit we told him seven years ago. Because an American black nigga is going to stand up for himself. Yeah, at some point. Forget about the anti-black shit that Ye does sometimes. And Candace Owens with Turning Point USA bullshit. Heritage Foundation. Most black Americans, if somebody try to run up on them with a weapon, yeah. call them the N-word, they're going to stand up and fight back. There we go. Period. Period. So when you talk about Kendrick who's seen... People get their head, their brains blown out. Kendrick don't like you for philosophical reasons. He feels you're phony, you the Matrix, you Mr. Smith, and he feels you are toxic to the culture. Now, do I believe in this black thing when it comes to hip hoppers? No, because Travis Scott said that Mike Brown shit. So most, some of the people on Future Side ain't on no pro black shit. So I'm not gonna pretend this is some pro black war between between. Uh, Kendrick and and Drake. I'm just saying Kendrick's perspective, you know. But yeah. overall, you know, uh, in order for Drake to win this, he's gonna have to maintain the black kids. Like Drake doesn't understand most black kids still fuck with him because when he got booed on stage, he got booed by a bunch of white kids, and white kids love Ye and, and black ones too. Believe it or not, when I look at a lot of the sneakerheads, when I go online. There are a lot of a lot of guys, a lot of black guys and kids that still fuck with Drake. And as long as he stops saying that American slave shit, because if you go back being bitter, coming at the black Americans, you're gonna lose. I'm gonna tell you right. You're quick. gonna have to. You're gonna have to you embrace your, your American heritage. At least you embrace your fathers. Yeah. When Drake came out with that bitter album, he said whips and chains like black American slaves like. You sounded like Iggy. Pimp, pimp. Hooray. And you got to keep in mind, Drake, you still, you're still from another country. To what you said, that people was like, huh? What does that mean? Because it's not even about saying it. Let's be real. A Brooklyn battle rapping nigga will say some of the most ignorant stuff concerning black American culture. Battle rappers say some of the most ignorant, abhorrent things about themselves, about people, people in general, different groups, different ethnicity, including the black folk. The reason why I'm bringing this all up is this. Drake has been, for the past couple of years, been tied to very lame niggas. I'm just being honest with you. And I kept wondering, I said, why does he keep running around here? He's making bad music with Dirk. He's sitting here having podcast talks with Aiden Ross, DJ Academics, and Yachty. He got mad at Joe Budden when Joe Budden said, go hang out with niggas your age. And... People got tight about that, but it does affect how Drake projects himself in the media. When you're sitting up here and you and Yachty have matching fingers, I have no problem with it. If that's what you do, that's what you do. But don't be mad when in hip hop, this is where Kendrick is coming from. In hip hop, when Kendrick says, I am better than you, nigga, you are soft, you are weak, stop crying about it. It is hip hop. Drake came in also under the notion of the auspice of letting us know how astute and well rounded his hip hop knowledge is. Remember, when MF Doom passed away, one of the greatest MCs of all time, Drake made a post on his IG 
people were so confused because Drake's successful marketing and multi-branded campaign had worked so well when he made a post about MF Doom people thought he was clout chasing I said no Drake is a hip-hop historian that's actually what adds to his repertoire as a very crafty MC now I get it some folks say that nigga don't write his shit listen I get it that's one of the things we talk about when them reference tracks came out behind allegedly said the likes of him sleeping with DJ Drama's girl and then it was handed over to Funkmaster Flex but also Meek Mill thought he had something to go against Drake but he got his ass put up in a double wrist lock when that nigga dropped back to back but Drake said well wait a minute let me educate you real quick right now did that necessarily secure people's insecurities about Drake whether he was really a real MC or not not all the way but he performed very well it, it, right? it changed 90% of people's minds, but it was still lingering back there. And then you Bad. fucked up, so now it's back in the forefront. Now, the reason why we were saying what we're saying about Drake, Pusha T is a very important milestone in Drake's career. Sin and I said, Drake does not have, he does he don't have the real estate to ignore Pusha T based on his past. If he didn't have the Quentin Miller tracks come out, Right. Remember what Pusha T said on Infrared, you don't even write your songs. <laughs> you know, my thing is that I think Jay Prince calculation was wrong. Drake, you should have put out the track like we told you, bro. Look, people don't have to like us in the industry because we don't capitulate to bullshit and we didn't allow them non-black people to put you know their fingers in people's butts. <laughs> we we pew, finger, pew, butt, pew, pew, pew. finger butt free. Some of y'all allowed it. Cool. And so some of y'all don't like those people and resentful and all that other shit. But at least a lot of people in the industry respect what we say, though, because we're consistent and we actually have great ideas when it comes to strategy. And a lot of the times when y'all niggas didn't listen, that took a big ass out. And Drake is a perfect example of that. I would do what, what, what Kendrick did. While I'm trying to reorganize my camp, I will let the track be released that talked about Pusha T. And the reason why I would do that is to validate the fact that I did have a track. Yes. Might as well open up that can of worms and that beef with Pusha T, the surgical summer, since it's going to happen anyway with Kendrick. And it will make you look like John Wick. But of course, you know, people people in that industry be lame and they don't fucking oh, listen. Oh, you ain't got to do that, man. Fuck the niggas, man. You know, Can I get a feature, man? They, they yeah, told, fuck the niggas, man. They Jeez. told Drake it was all about the Benjamins, yeah, baby. Man, it ain't about all that, man. And I told Drake to his ear, man. I said, man, Kenny can't fuck with you, man. <laughs> shit. You know, and Drake, he looked at me because, you know, Drake know how I know him. He know how I know him. I'm so sick of you niggas. I hate you niggas. I do. I hate you type of niggas. Drake came in under the auspice of a singing ass MC. Drake did not come in and say, you know, I look up to Mims, I look up to uh, Jigs, I look up to Chingy. He came in and quoted Rakim. He came in and quoted Nas. He come in quoting Jay-Z. That's hip hop. And one thing I'm so tired of, especially the social media streaming niggas, because you get to talk to the nigga on it and you get to tell him about, you know, what really turns you on about his dick pics. I'm tired of you all trying to narrate. Aiden Ross does not have no authority or say so in hip hop. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. You don't have no. It Kendrick's verse is not lame based on your credentials. An ass sniffer of Andrew Tate. You're an ass sniffer. You're an ass sniffer of Andrew Tate. Keep your nose in the next man's seat. <laughs> <laughs> and keep your nose out of hip hop right because like that is an appetizer since you don't know anything about hip hop it's like what we told when his came out his is not a full disc it's an appetizer it's a warning shot like that is a warning shot even when he mentioned the coffin that's a warning shot when Pusha T did infrared that was a warning shot but a setup as well so Drake cannot respond to this until he's prepared. If he responds to it prematurely, unprepared, he's going to get a surgical summer when he's going to get embarrassed. If he don't respond at all, he's a punk bitch for life. His career is over. And all the men in the industry was going to rub their nuts in his face. They're doing it right, right now. But if he responds calculated with strategy, then we're going to have a real war on our hands. And I mean a musical war 
because I'm not doing what the publicists did in the 90s when they stirred the fire of West Coast versus East Coast and getting black people killed and shit. I'm not for the violence. It, it, it should stay in hip hop. When we say on war, Let's we go. mean musical war. Pull out your musical sword and get, and let, and get busy musically. Yeah. So look, that being the case, there's clearly a message being sent when Future, King of Atlanta, says, We do not trust you. We don't trust you. We don't trust you. Right. No more. And listen to what he's saying on top of all of these records. He's got Prodigy at the end of it, making Drake sound like a, a buffoon in, in rap music. I'm not saying, you know, as far as, you know, Future is some arbiter of truth. But what he's saying is that Drake is inauthentic. I told you all Kendrick's secret weapon is what? His conviction. If you really kind of look at it from Kendrick's perspective, there are a lot of reasons to not like Drake. I mean, just if we talk about the notion of double XL or not double XL, but extentation, all right? Imperfected artists. I'm just making a statement here. Look, we saw extentation have his music removed from public streaming services. And then Kendrick came out and says, if you guys do that or start doing this with artists in general, I'm pulling my shit. Yo, Spotify. Then, right? And then when the 17 album came out, y'all saw Kendrick, he was online, said he's listened to it fifth, what, five times in a row, right? So that clearly means Kendrick resonated with Extentacion somewhere. And also, by the way, Kendrick had brought Extentacion out on his tour. But then K-Dot, you know, he pays attention to all of this shit. What is Drake saying in all of these songs? You know, oh, if that boy wasn't talking live on that live, he'd be alive times five, times two, times 12, 55. How many times Drake didn't allegedly commemorated the death and killing this boy over and over and over in records look again people are paying attention to this again Kendrick already is not messing with him but he sees this on top of that then let's say for Kendrick Lamar you know he fucked with Nipsey also but then when Nipsey died everybody came out oh he was the greatest crip ever well Kendrick did records with Nipsey before all of that even happened right then you flip it on the other side of the game now it may not be 21 Savage, but I'm from Atlanta. I know Atlanta. Niggas were talking about Drake still running around here in Atlanta screaming mob ties. Look, we just look, we, we, we're not, we're not castigating what we just said interpolitically, right? It's just bad looks all the way around. And I'm going to be honest with you, Drake public relations within the status of hip hop and rap music as it stands right now has been horrible. Yeah, you lost Sanj, uh C, you know, you lost some of the women. Some of these people you can get back. Right. You know, by putting out great music and again being light and dark. People like Drake when he's light and dark at the same time or just light. Mm -hmm. They don't like full debauchery from Drake. He can't pull it off. You got a Leo ascendant. You you're not pulling it off. Yeah. Future people can fuck with full debauchery that's, with yeah, future that, that's shango musically yeah. <laughs> you know you have to know what lane you have to be in to win future is comfortably in his lane see the video he just dropped yeah. he comfortably where he's supposed to be that nigga made that album in his sleep you on the other end is wearing a mask that don't fit you and it's it's looking horrible and this is not a diss towards Drake, because like we said, we're not picking sides in this. Musically, they have all have given us moments. Kendrick has the best albums to us, you know, three classics in a row. Drake has had some crazy-ass uh, features before, and he has a couple of good albums, too. Yeah. You know, J. He's Cole. an incredible run. J. Cole with his features as well, and Forest yeah. Hill Drive, and For Your Eyes Only, and stuff like that. Forest Hill Gump. Even though some people don't like For Your Eyes Only, but I Prince do. and I do. We do. I uh, you know, so... A lot of these people have brought a lot to the culture. Of course, Migo, uh, the Migos is a staple in Atlanta future and stuff like that. An incredible 15 year run. But we're at a, t a time where what happened seven years ago is coming back again. Venusian the, cycles. The same beefs that were happening seven years ago. They're here. 
are here again yeah, and people are here to finish the last dance as we said it before a couple years ago they said i hot dog crimes you said our <laughs> boy was going to drown and get and get and get deleted mm -hmm. but he didn't first of all we're not wishing nothing on nobody we didn't say no. we wanted him deleted right. we said we wanted him to fight so we could see a really good battle between some pretty good artists right and we're at this point again where drake is at the crosshairs yeah. where he can be evicted and he can't be egocentric in the sense of thinking that just giving out some ass shit he's gonna win you're going up against future you're going up against kendrick you're going up against your own nigga from canada the weekend you're going up against a lot of heavy hitters musically and everybody knows your sore spots they know you sensitive with women because of her loss they know your secrets they know that uh you try to use male friendships to get ahead even with people who don't like you like with chris brown yeah chris brown said you know as long as i don't go jake liana we could be friends i'm not shaking on that shit you see what asap rocky did i don't give a fuck what no nigga say about what bitches on my arm yeah, yeah, i'm with rihanna and i'm knocking her up four or five times which is yeah, what he's doing right now got some more babies to drop off in that thing mm -hmm. now the other side of the game is this. Look, this is just how the hip hop world is. I know a lot of, and I do pay attention to the Aubrey fans online. Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, your boy, your man, he revered hip hop coming in the game. Now, here is what is interesting. If Drake goes Drake Avelli, I'll say that again. Do, 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 do. It would be wise for Drake. Why not? You got Rick Ross unfollowing you. What you're having right now is an annex of the South. The South is succeeding from the union of hip hop. You think more Florida Floridians and the game over there in Florida is going to exit out on Drake? Because actually, the funny thing is, when he did that, Drake is in Florida right now. Yeah, well, again, you better go be talking to Hyman Roth. Pimp, pimp. pimp, pimp. Hooray! Because, look, the thing is this. Let me tell you something about Atlanta. Atlanta is one of the most clickish city you can ever live in. I guarantee you, the future's talking like this. Everybody's talking like this in Atlanta. I'm not saying Drake can't do a, a song with an artist here and there. But honestly, if y'all think about it, who did he pull to do the album with? 21 Savage. Who's, who's okay? He gives you some good shit. He's yeah. actually better than what people expected him to be. That's all. You know, he's better than Yachty and Sexy Red. We'll give him yeah. that. But he's not going to be loyal yeah. to you. No. <laughs> not that. Why would I do why, why would I move after that? You saw the Aiden Ross shit. Yeah. <laughs> 20, Where would I go? 21 Savage is still a dusty nigga. And we know, <laughs> we know how much Southern rap culture means to Drake. I, I'll say that again. We understand how much Southern rap culture particularly atlanta and houston texas and memphis the big three and even when he needed to have a hit kick out again behind the push of t loss he went and tapped to new orleans bounce music so for this to be happening right now yeah him coming out to futures my savages my savages my savages look i don't know what that means drake like uh, one of our men said in the chat, Drake, I don't know why you're walking out to Future's music after he dissed you. And I love what the brother said. He said, just because I don't know, I'm going to prematurely hand you an L right now. Well, I'm not doing it, but it looked confusing. Question though. Yes. And this is for people in the chat, this question too. Yes. Do you think J. Cole going to be committed to this battle because he did get a diss by Kendrick as well? And if he is committed, do you think Dream Real will come into it? Because the only chance I... See, for Drake to make it a squad thing is if J. Cole brings in uh, Dreamville. But, because, you know, everybody else we just named, like, Yachty and Sexy Red ain't going to cut it. Unless you do make Sexy Red do some hooks and focus Same. on the niggas on Dreamville that can rap. So what's Man, your thoughts? If he brings in Saved by the Bell Dreamville, I'm going to bed. Stop it! I'm going to bed. Press stop I'm going it. to sleep. If he brings J.I.D.? In, yeah, I, Kendrick would smoke that nigga up in the blunt. Okay, listen. And we I have, love JID oh, as a as a his own. I actually think JID should do R and B. <laughs> okay, but Prince. Yes. Are you saying that just to? Yes, go ahead. So I can understand what you're saying. All right. Are you saying Drake shouldn't bring in anybody when when Future and Kendrick and Metro and all them together? Let me or are you saying 
You just don't feel Dreamville cut it. Fuck it, I go acapella, no Rockefeller. <laughs> Shit, it's just me going against you all trying to stop a fella. Right. Drake needs to go Dracovelli by himself. You feel this should be close and intimate. I think he should be a very positive, toxic Scorpio. If he doesn't remember what Scorpio means, he has to shit. Shouts out to be more. He has to shed the unnecessary shit. Get rid of sexy red's lace front. Get rid of Yachty's fingernail polish. <laughs> Tell Aiden Ross, sorry, white nigga, I have to log off. Tell academics detox. He has to approach all of these niggas by himself. <laughs> Jesse the Gym Sox basketball player Cole Force Hill Gump. You go handle your own shit, nigga. Well, no, I don't, I don't. That last part I disagree. I do agree with you. An intimate, dope ass Tennessee produced or Chicago produced or Houston produced tracks. A EP going Machiavelli for Drake will work. But he has to have J. Cole with him, too, because J. Cole got this. And the other niggas, okay, if you have an Atlanta Floridian niggas jumping you, you can't just be like, I'm just only going to be the only one. Especially when J. Cole, what do you mean go by himself? He getting this, Drake, I mean, Kendrick packed them both up. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm both of y'all, I'm packing up. But you got to understand this, though. Future ain't dissing J. Cole. No, he not. Future don't care about J. Cole. Fuck what you saying. <laughs> Not you, babe. I'm talking about it just in general. Fuck what he's saying, okay, with his international South African basketball team. No, the rest, right? of, the rest of the niggas aren't talking about Cole, only That's Kendrick. Why if Drake doesn't do a big risk factor right now and just go Drake Ovelli, because he's not going to get all of the praise. People are going, you know how much they hate this nigga Drake? The public. Prince Solomon does not hate Drake, neither does Sincere Ignorance. There's some shit that everybody does that's goofy to me. Yeah, and we don't including hate... Including myself. We don't hate Kendrick. We don't but hate Future. Uh, again, all the I people have put out some dope God, shit. Go ahead. It wouldn't matter. Drake cannot have no one in his victory because niggas hate him so much they will never give him direct credit. Well, he already know they that. That's say, what he was crying about on uh, his... Uh, for my dogs. What he, he, he cried about when he said... Uh, <clears throat> Will they? Oh, will they ever give me credit? Will of course not on the first shooter uh, track. Uh, who, who gives a fuck? Take the credit. You know, I, you don't give me shit. I take it. You do have to understand to have an American mindset, though. Yeah, it's like I don't give, I don't give a fuck if you give me credit or not. I'm taking. You see it, how Ken, you want to know Ken, why Kendrick got three classics? When Kendrick Lamar did to Pimp a Butterfly, his own American niggas called him lame. Did it stop him? No. Yeah, he came out with damn too and said, stupid niggas, I could do this too while still maintaining my musical and rap integrity. You got to understand, when American niggas stand on their square, we always win. Yes. When they capitulate, they lose. And so when you capitulating and dumbing it down and all this other shit, you're just going to lose. But I do agree. The reason why Kendrick is, is looking good right now, because we've seen, look, Kendrick got, look, America, America is an asshole country. It is. So, yeah, There's just... beautiful things about us, of course, but <laughs> we're assholes. I mean, look at how we all talk about each other online. Even the ones who think they're not an asshole, they're still an asshole too. Your mother's an asshole. Your daddy's an asshole. Hey, look, it's like, a, come on now. It's the call. We, all yeah. crackers talk shit. Niggas talk yeah, shit. Let's let's be real. Mexicans, let's, burritos let's, over let's, here. Let's, let's, let's get this shit out. Everybody. Man. That's why I feel like this. I feel like this. Do not listen to anyone. That is telling Drake to put his stinger up or his claws up. I'm going to tell you something right now so Drake can understand that him not being from America, let alone Atlanta. He do not understand Atlanta. Because I saw him running around with 20 cents. I told Sin this. I said, he keeps running around with this nigga. Where's Future at? I'm not saying 21 Savage, is, he's a nobody in Atlanta, but we all know who the king of Atlanta is. Right? So Drake is shouting everybody out. I'm so mad about the collect calls, the private phone calls of Young Thug getting out. But here's Future on We Don't Trust You. He got a song called My Twin. It's dedicated to Young Thug. And we know that Young Thug and Future made way better music together. For me personally, as far as albums go. People are going to say you biased. You grew up in Atlanta. 
<laughs> no, I grew up in Canada. You know, uh, <laughs> I think that uh, Thugger and Future made best, better music together. You from Atlanta, I'm just, Prince? I'm just saying. <laughs> but here's the thing: so Drake can get this. Drake, America was built for, founded by assholes. Yeah. Now some people are sweet. We do have we do, yes. a minority sweet conscious. Yeah. We we uh, they don't live as long. They don't, they, Martin Luther King they don't live as they long. They don't live as long. But there is a a, a minority sweetness yes. Yes. to America. You talk about the Harriet Tubman. You're right. talking about people who are so lovingly brave. Yeah. But that's the minority of American consciousness is lovingly brave. The majority are assholes. So, no matter. Here's what Drake has to understand, and I'm we're gonna be because last stream we kind of kept it on like Cole and Kendrick. This stream, we're talking about Drake. Nigga, no matter how many tattoos you put on your face, no matter how many times you say you slime bitches out or other niggas bitches out, and I'm using your words, they will never see you as one of them. Right. I'll say this again. No matter how many times you make these Raz Ghoul music, these <laughs> niggas will never see you as one of them look at what megan said posted up in another nigga's hood like a bad bitch we all knew she was talking about you y'all nigga keep fucking around fucking around fuck around get stuck in the ground and because she's an american nigga she survived when other american niggas were hating on her even with the jamaican the, ones with, with the canadian bacon uh uh what's his name tory lanes okay. she she survived because she's american even so, if you felt you she's know. lying even if you feel that way, Tory is in jail because he's Canadian. <laughs> it's proven my point. American Beyonce and American Jay Z backed her over the Canadian Tory Lane. Okay. And again, shout out to the Canadian listeners who support us. Y'all, the third country that is our biggest viewership. So we, we thank y'all. But yeah, even Megan Thee Stallion. Being trying to be humiliated by alternative hip hop media, yes, she still had the courage to say in her hiss video, posted up in another nigga hood like a bad bitch. Yes, and then another thing, I'm gonna tell you something else. The reason why Nicki Minaj did not see Megan's Law line coming in her direction again, another person that does not completely understand, although she has an idea of a little better than drake much better she's she's yeah. a, she a nigga that's why yeah, he's yeah still trying to get new booty or bu new body whatever yeah. from her yeah whatever that is right you're right though but look this is what it is drake do you guys understand one of drake's one of his greatest um inspirational mcs this is for drake drake you can write all the dissertations for Joe Bud and all you want, and I get it. You guys got your own situation going on. Like, there. Uh, love hate bros. Yeah, it, it's whatever. It's, it's it's weird. It's like a you know, it's, it's something. It's some thick energy there. However, though, one thing that Joe Budden said in his rhymes that was legendary: Why try to fit in when you're a standout? All we see is Drake trying to fit his awkward ass puzzle shape headed ass into these weird jacked up pieces drake no matter how many times you dirty your face up how many braids you put in your hair how much you try to look like a nigga to them a nigga nigga i'm not saying you're not black but no matter how many times you dirty your brand up for niggas or does this self-sabotaging edward scissorhand shit that you've been doing they will never see you as one of them like they see a Quavo or a Takeoff or a Future or even an eggplant-headed double-crossing nigga like Travis Scott or a fat-neck lying-ass nigga like Kanye West. So why try to fit in when you're a standout? It's about the fans. And it's like, don't diss the American fan base because even right then you fucking up or you're losing. A lot of people have given you a lot of chances in hip-hop Drake, when it comes to hip hop media and when it comes to the audience, you kept crying because niggas in Atlanta don't fuck with you. Guess what? They're clicking shit anyway. I'm they don't you that. like some other American niggas. Just like New York niggas talk shit and be rude to everybody. Like some people's like, 
you know, send to New York. Did the East Coast hate the South? No, they no. talk shit about other barrels. Yeah. If you in New York, they talk about mm-hmm. how annoying and crazy the niggas from the Bronx are. You got to dodge knives from fucking crazy Puerto Ricans with their Puerto Rican flags in, or on the outside window of their apartment buildings, right? Mm-hmm. They talk about the griminess of Brooklyn niggas. Jersey niggas are talking right now about how they hate that New York niggas are coming to Jersey because they fucking up New York. The East Coast talk shit about each other all the time. So when they talk shit about the South, it don't it, matter. It doesn't surprise me. It, it doesn't matter. That's why a lot of times, look, I don't, I don't care. But I'm trying to figure out, Drake, what are you doing? You better get this course right with Kendrick Lamar. You didn't listen the first time around when we said, snap the horns off the Taurus male push your teeth. Break his horns off. <laughs> and uh, KK, uh, well, he don't need to. I said, uh, yes, he does. Because I'm sure whenever Jay Prince was challenged with an opponent in his line of work, he took care of it. Ain't that something? I mean, it ain't really nobody like, you know, in Houston, like, yo, I run Houston too. Nobody says anything about that in Houston. Okay? But no matter how much he runs around here with Yachty and everybody else, Drake has to understand this. It's not hate, nigga. They just don't see you as one of them, and it's cool. It's all right. I mean, I got a different perspective. I mean, I'm a king, right? If if, if I'm Drake, I'm a king. Because Kendrick is telling you I'm king. And you're like, why he keeps saying that to me? Well, nigga, you don't believe that yourself? Because this little small nigga keeps pecking at your tall ass. Somebody's downfall will be televised. (laughs) And everybody (laughs) tell us in the chat. Will it be Team Drake and Cole if Cole doesn't doesn't backpedal? Or would it be Kendrick, Future, and Metro. We'll see. Because uh, Nav, they said also unfollowed Drake. You know what? So it's a lot of, it seems like crazy. a lot of uh, dudes in the industry. This is why we say the eviction note is not only from Atlanta, but even possibly from the hip hop game as well. So yeah. we'll see. And what did we say? Remember saying, when Drake was going through what he was going through with Pusha T at the time, and we said no one came to his defense. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Do you all remember that chat? No one came to Drake's defense. Remember when it looked like Drake was on the outs with Pusha T. Nobody came to defend Drake because every one of these guys was waiting for it. They're saying, I'm not co-signing Kanye, but nigga, I don't have a real interest of speaking. Well, Prince, do you want to take in calls right now? Because I'm excited to see what everybody think about this commentary. But, Will, the question for callers is, do you think Drake will be evicted, if not, if it already didn't happen, from Atlanta and from hip-hop altogether? Or will he fight back and be victorious? We want to know what your thoughts are. What do you think about uh, Kendrick Lamar's verse, appetizer diss? It really gave me deja vu with infrared with Pusha T. Is this another trap? Is this another setup for Drake to lose his head? Yeah. Let us know. We're yeah. going to uh, give y'all the number in a couple of seconds because we want y'all to know uh, that we really are interested in what y'all have to say. I don't know what the fuck that Canadian nigga name is. Yeah. I, 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 think, I thought that's the way you pronounce it, the N-A-V. But anyway, uh, let us know in the chat. Prince just put in the number and you want to give him it again? Yeah, it's right there. 903 600 503 Call in, you know, be clear, concise, straight to the point. Let's get to it like Kenny and then let's see what's pew, going pew. on. All right. Oh, look First at caller. That. All right, man. Listen to this. All right. Uh, caller, Welcome. you're now live. What's up? The think tank can hear you. What's good with you? Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, you can, you can. Uh, also, make sure you turn down your audio. Uh, it sounds like the feds is listening. Go ahead. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Sorry, that was my um uh, computer. But this is night night again. Night night. Night night. What's man. up? What's up? Do 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 do. What's up? Yeah, man. Seen all these delusional J Cole fans thinking that J Cole and Kendrick Lamar is cool. No, they're not. Mm-hmm. Cole already pick a side. He was already. Being uh, Kendrick Lamar since day one. Mm. 
him and Drake and him plotting to get rid of uh, uh, K Dot the longest. Both mm-hmm. envy him, man. Okay. Okay. So you feel like people are not understanding that J. Cole was riding all the way and he's not doing that backpedal and shit like he's done before with other people. He he's been envious of K Dot and so him and, and Drake are gonna stick to the plan of trying to get rid of him. But what do you think about the other players though? Like what do you think about the whole Atlanta thing? And why do you think from your perspective, uh the people of Atlanta, the the heavy uh, hitters are, are are wanting to get rid of Drake. About time. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that shit right now. It's about time. But see, right. Drake been a culture vulture since the beginning. Mm-hmm. Always been the privileged, you know, Canadian kid, you know, in the hip hop rap game for the, uh, you know, for the one uh, percent roughy. Well, yeah, you know what? Uh, again, let's keep it real. You know, Drake did get the Midas touch from Lil Wayne at the height of Lil Wayne's career. You know, this is this is Carter Three, Carter Four, Wayne. So it's like you know, you I feel can't. like that was an easy layup. Ooh, and, Lord wait, have mercy. That's a, shit. That's like but, if I got LeBron yeah, James on my team. That was an easy team. layup. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was an easy layup. But then don't forget his first, his very first album. He had he had all the the. the uh, the high profile players. Mm. So Lisa Key, Jay Z. This goes on. Well, you know, Drake, you know, and plus he you know, he has that uh, Israel background. Night night said we go we gonna plainly say he got the Israeli flag in his background. <laughs> he ain't even got it all figured out yet. <laughs> all right. You, you know, like I said, man. <laughs> it's all calculated. I do my homework. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I always do my homework, you know, mm-hmm. first before I say anything. Mm-hmm. I always pay attention very carefully, and I always connect the dots. Always connect the dots. But, see, these fans, man, they they, they so delusional. They think that, you know, uh, uh, you know, everybody's reaching, everybody's fake beefs and stuff, fake wars. No, man, this is real. All right, night, night. We appreciate you so much. Thank you, player, too, man. Shouts out to night, night. And night, night, when you get a chance, we're going to have you set up to call back in because we got more of these things to cover as well, too, by the way. Again, the number is 903-600-0530. I'm going to give a round of applause to night, night, too. This, this man been on it from day one. Call from Curtis. Hey, uh, caller Curtis. Curtis, Curtis, you're now live with the Think Tank. They can hear you right now. What's good with you, player? Hey, what's up, man? What's up, man? How y'all doing tonight? Oh, we're doing great, man. We're doing good right now. We're watching this coup d'etat. <laughs> yeah, man. You know what? Drake can kind of get out of this. Okay, all right. Let's let's see we, how he can get out of child support. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he got a, uh, the production. He got to switch it up. Okay. Yes. He got to switch it up. I, I know you saying he need to go to Memphis. I, I, no, 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 no. Go left field. Holla at Case for Dada. Mm. <laughs> Kate's for not. <laughs> That's actually yeah, going in Kendrick's get, territory. But go ahead, <laughs> d- d- dude. Get, get dude. That's that what I mean. Mm. Get, get the flying lotus. Mm. Y- yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I, I get you. So you, okay. So you want him to go into third eye nigga territory? Yes. <laughs> you know what? He might as well go into both. If he did like. A six, uh, um, like, what do you think if he did like a six single EP? Like, three of the tracks is what you saying, like Hit Boy, Flying Lotus, all that shit, and and talk about finally his true feelings about Black America, because this is the shit that Yay, a uh, fat neck, was trolling you about. And then the other three tracks, it could be uh, uh, the Memphis shit and all that. Yes, that's why I say the Flying Lotus. Like, look, dog, you you, you got to bear it all, yeah. and that is he got to do, he got to, he got to do it by himself too. <laughs> thank, so you, you, thank, you. That, yeah, right? thank you, my brother. Thank you, brother. Thank he you. got he he got to. Yeah. And say Cole, I don't want to hear that hippie shit he gonna do backpedaling. <laughs> <laughs> well, Night Night said he said that Cole and Drake was all already preparing when they did first shooter, they were preparing to do some more slugs at Kendrick. And you know, I guess Kendrick Not surprised everybody and came out with the like that verse. Nah, not not no more. And I want to say one more thing to the big son. Stay out of this. 
Shouts out Detroit. He said, you just, you just, Curtis, you just watching Detroit right now. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm from Detroit. No, right. bitch, I'm a dope. Yeah. No, I'm saying stay out of it or let that say his name. I get you. Well, I mean, well, K Dot. <laughs> Well, I do. I do feel like there's some valid criticisms there. What, what was the song that um, um, Big Sean did? What was it? No more answers or whatever. Where he was getting back. No more Kendrick. interviews. No more interviews. I, I actually was I, feeling that joint. That shit was fine. Hey, but the thing. Go ahead. I don't know. I'm gonna put my ten four Koofy hat on. <laughs> I don't think Kendrick and Big Sean be got nothing to do with that control verse. Okay, what do you think it got to do with it? <sighs> okay, I, I hate I hate to say it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it had to do with with with, his, with Big Sean current love of his life. Uh, you think it's Janae Aiko? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Pisces women. <laughs> think 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 about it. Think about it. Before she got big, she was all hanging with with, with Top Dog. You, you know what? You, I, look, I'm trying I listen, to say somebody smashed it from Top I mean, Dog. I mean, look, Kendrick no. does have a very intimate verse on one of Janae Eichel's songs. It's a very, Come on. yeah. I mean, I make love yeah. to you when I put it up in your body. Well, in his diss towards Big Sean, he said you, Big Sean is known for being with her. So he, that was an interesting Ooh, well, shot right there. Curtis. But I do think, look, Big Sean shouldn't say anything until everything is cleared up. The Atlanta niggas ain't thinking about Big Sean. No. Most of the people in this beef who want to get at Drake are not looking for Big Sean. Big Sean should wait that till the war is over and then, with a clear atmosphere, go after uh, Kendrick so him and Kendrick can have their little, you know, uh, lyrical battle. I keep telling people, every time y'all jump Kendrick, the little nigga gets stronger. Y'all got to be careful with double teaming no. this nigga. See, see. I don't know if you peeped that little documentary video Big Sean did about all the cats he went to the studio with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, save that energy. Ackerman, Tyler, the creator. Yeah, dog, say worry about the album. Let, let them three, yeah, let them do them. You stay out of it. <laughs> all right. Thank then. you, Detroit. <laughs> Thank you so much, Curtis. All right, play. <laughs> okay, let's go. There we go, man. Loving it, loving, loving it too, guys. Part T. All right, what's good with you? You're now live. Uh, this is your man Prince Solomon, along with Sincere Ignorance. You know, hey, what, what's your take on all of this? Prince and Sin. This is Part T. I want to thank y'all for doubling up with another stream the day after we needed this. Uh, I didn't get enough Saturday. Pause. No diddy. Uh, you know, yeah. so appreciate y'all for bringing it back. This is the best hip hop commentary okay. currently. We appreciate that. On this great Cole Kendrick situation, uh, it, it might be over for the Canadian. It, mm. it really might be over this time, man. I don't. Th he's messing around with, with with cats. I feel like could play on the same plane as him, the same level as him when it comes to the metaphysical. You know, uh, this is not by chance that Kendrick chose to do this over an OG West Coast classic Rodney O and Joe Cooley beat. Mm -hmm. I think that was purposeful. I think he heard that and he said, God damn it, now's the time to strike. I think he he felt as if I ain't got this nigga punch and uh, uh, <laughs> this nigga top in my ear no more. I don't got the dog collar on me no more. Uh, and like I kept saying yesterday, man, you can not bully the Gemini. I'm a Gemini born June 16th. Mm. We will go nuclear. Well, so you so born on the day of, uh, you born on Tupac's birthday. Yeah, that's Tupac's Absolutely. birthday. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. And I didn't like that nigga when I met him. But that's the <laughs> And more truth for your head down, so watch how you speak on my name, you know? You know, man, you added to the West Coast reputation, because <laughs> y'all West Coast dudes, y'all just say something left field. You be like, yeah, yeah. I knew that nigga. He a fuck boy. <laughs> but go ahead. Man, I'm just saying, with my, my dealing with him on a couple occasions, I didn't like the nigga, man. But at that time, I didn't know he was born the same day. But this isn't about that. This is also, <laughs> I'm, I'm declaring right now, and yeah. I'm sure y'all have already you know, peek this out. Yeah. This will be the last rap battle of this magnitude we will see in the history of major labels being involved with hip hop. This is it. I agree. So I everybody agree should be yelling at this. Everybody mm -hmm. should be applauding this because after this, 
the industry itself is done, but after this, there will be no more. There will be no more. Appreciate y'all. Thanks for having me on, man. Love you guys. Shout out to the Think Tank. And uh, shout out to Night Night, man. Hey, hey, he cold blooded. Appreciate you, Left Coaster, man. We love you. Thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, we love too, man. Thank you for being on the line. <laughs> you Night funny. Night, ha- <laughs> Night Night has the stem somewhere. He's in he his skin. I know. I, I know, but I, I can't. I, I'm going to let him breathe. He got it. But thank you so much, he man. He got it. He got it. Y'all be easy. Man, love it, love it, Call love from- it. All right, Carla, you're now live with the Think Tank. Your man, Prince Solomon, along with Sincere Ignorance. What's up with you? Yo, what's going on, y'all? First and foremost, we want to say it's in now, but much love to y'all, man. I'm loving what y'all doing, man. Y'all keep up the good work, man. We For appreciate real. it. We, we, hey, we just, we just want y'all to come along, and, and we appreciate y'all leaving and uh, uh, letting us uh, grab y'all ear holes for a second. Yeah, man, it's all love, man. Yo, man, so I'm coming out of Cali, yo, so... Uh, I'm going to try to keep mine short and very simple, man. But I'm going to say this right now. It's kind of been a... I'm surprised that everybody's kind of catching on to this kind of late. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The whole Drake situation, I feel like maybe probably since like the 2015 era, mm-hmm. Drake kind of been riding the whole... Uh, kind of been riding the, uh, the wave of the South ever since 2015. If you look back at it, uh, ever since uh, he linked up with Migos, he yeah. linked up with Future, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? That kind of elevated his career to even uh, higher, to a higher altitude once he made that link. He's kind of been locked in. And ever since, ever since, you know what I'm saying, this whole little rift with, between him, or not, well, not between him and his Future first, but I'm talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about Atlanta-based uh, problems first, right? Mm-hmm. So you look at that beef he had with uh, DJ Drama. Yes. He had that uh, little uh, uh, little riff he had with, I'm not going to say T.I., but I think we all heard that little situation he had with T.I.'s man when, when old boy uh, allegedly peed on him from uh, upstairs, I guess, when it was at like a little venue or whatever. So he's been having these little little uh, nip or tap uh, beef in, in and out of Atlanta for a minute. And now it's kind of coming to, at, at, a, at, a, at a crash course. And, uh, you know, dudes is kind of like looking at him like, I agree with you, what you were saying earlier, brother, when you was kind of basically saying like, you know, these Atlanta street dudes, no matter how much you try to fit in or try to perpetuate that, oh, you know what I'm saying? I'm one of the guys. Well, really, you, brother, you just, you just a dude from Canada. You're not an American like that. And they don't respect you like that. Yeah, I think now it's I, coming I at a crash saying. course now. No, I get what you say. You, listen, yeah, now it, Atlanta, Atlanta is a transplant city, you, but it's an international highway of the South. I'm telling you how it is. You, Memphis boys come down there and hustle. Detroit boys, Chicago, L.A., Cali boys. Everybody comes down there to hustle. But it's what Drake actually is from. He's from Canada, and then he's thrown on this image, yep. and he has been making knockoff future music for some time now, and it is very interesting. Yeah. After the debacle in the South yeah, concerning Takeoff's death, we're at this road where heads of Atlanta have a problem with Drake right now. Continue. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. Uh, uh, just on that point, uh, just in general, especially with the uh, with the Takeoff uh, situation, uh, you see that he hasn't even linked up with uh, with uh, with Quavo or Take or. Or with the uh, offset ever since the death of Takeoff, and I'm surprised just by that because when it was the Migos, when the three Migos were together, Drake was highly on their albums, almost every album, doing the verse. Mm-hmm. And now in these times when you know Quavo's not really popping like that as he once was, or Offset wasn't popping uh, like that as he once was when they all three were together as a trio as the Migos, Drake kind of distanced himself away from these guys. And now that we're seeing it literally in real time, now he's even dissing himself away from future. And I, uh, uh, the whole, uh, when he dropped the album with, uh, uh, 21 Savage, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can, I'm not saying I speak for everybody, but for the, for the most part, people that are, that are listen, that are really involved in the culture, everybody was surprised when Drake linked up with 21 Savage for that collab album. He's like, well, what are you doing? Everybody thought he was going to run it back for future. And of course, that's going to have the top head. Uh, I think you said earlier, uh, brother, when you was talking about 
you know, the king of Atlanta is future. So there has to be somewhat of a slap in the face or a slight at, at, at future where future's like, yo, we make it, we make it hit together. How are we not running this back? So I completely understand, uh, you know, do some Atlanta just kind of like at a, at a crossroads with Drake. I'm not saying it's over for Drake. You know what I'm saying? I think he still has a, uh, is going to have a career in this industry. But as far as him just putting on this whole little facade, like he's a street dude. Because if you go to his first album, Drake's not talking no street stuff, none of that. It's just that rapidy rap rap. And then you go maybe three albums down the line. Now he's just talking all this street stuff, and he's gonna get this done to you and that done to you. I'm I'm just lost, and I think uh, a lot of hip hop fans that listen to Drake from the beginning are just like uh, at a crossroads as well too. It's just like, yo, who is this guy? What is Drake's real? Uh, what is his real identity? And I think that you know, with his next upcoming project, this is for, uh, this will be a time for Drake to put the pen to the pad and show exactly the hip hop community who he is. Because right now, I think he's at a crossroads of just literally finding out, yo, this is who I am. I'm sorry, this is his opportunity to let the hip hop world know, Atlanta know, just like yo, this is who I am, and uh, I'm gonna be moving like this from now forward. Because I just, uh, I'm talking about this. From a, a fan of the culture, I just don't know how impactful. I'm talking about impact, right? How impactful is Drake gonna be without these top uh, 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 people in the culture that are from Atlanta when they're not on your side anymore? Yeah. No, no beats from Metro Boomin. Yep. No, no, uh, no features from Future. What's gonna? What? How is this gonna uh, uh, go? I'm not saying his career is over, but when you don't got the backing of Atlanta. That uh, technically, I guess people can still say Atlanta still got the torch still. How is Drake still going to uh, have these hits without that uh, that epic street uh, credibility coming out of Atlanta? Well, yeah, just to even just to add to what you're saying, um, Drake is starting to look like bad luck to uh, uh, a lot of people in the game. Take off is dead. Exentation is dead. And then... It, it looks yeah. like he's backstabbing future. And here's the interesting thing. We don't know who Drake is. Like, is one story true that he was the nice guy that they try to turn dark because he turned dark because they were just being mean to him, like the T.I. thing? Or is he the guy who was yeah. meant to be the vulture? And because we don't know which one he is, to your point, we need clarity. Because if you're the guy who's the vulture... Everybody on hip hop going to turn to you. Shit, hip hop media going to turn 100% against you because it's like, we know you're the villain now. But if you're the guy who turned it to the villain, not because you're a culture vulture, but because just niggas didn't like you, then that's a different narrative. So I do agree with you. Like, people, I would say more of the audience because the industry is already running against uh, Drake. But the future thing, to your point, is very deadly for him because Future still got the juice. Like you said, Migos is out of the game only because the heart is gone. Take off is important to them. They've, it's, blood, it's blood family, right? So even though they've been putting out music, yeah. there's been some energy loss. But Future is still 100% whole. He didn't lose anybody really close to him as of late. You know, so he has yeah. all the focus yeah. to go to war with Drake. Even in classic Scorpionic energy, his loss was a benefit because he ended up dropping his classic album, Dirty Sprite 2. And, and let me just say some real quick for the people that are say, what, what do you mean? Future's king of Atlanta. We're talking about in music because we know damn sure it ain't T.I. <laughs> no, it's not T.I. OK, let's just stop that right there. No, T.I. No, had an excellent not. run. Yeah, absolutely yeah, not. T.I. had an excellent yeah, a run. Good run. He had a great he run. He lost his black yeah. card. With, well, first he lost his first card with the men when they he did that uh, stopwatcher shit. Whatever the fuck it's called. Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers. And then he lost the black women with the Iggy shit. So he lost. T.I. is completely depowered now. Right. And then when people were looking forward to him in the Booty album, then all of this uh, paperwork, snitch allegation, all this Charleston <laughs> White one-eyed nigga shit came up. So people's like, whatever. <laughs> So, you know, Future's still making knocking music right now. And that's how you become king anywhere, particularly, especially in the hip hop or rap music, uh, especially in Atlanta. If you keep the clubs jumping all the time you roll out, you are king. Go ahead, Carly. Say your final thoughts here. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah. And with Drake not having that Future co sign no more, Thugger is gone. Uh, I don't know if he can reach out and uh, call Quavo. I don't know if he can. It looks like he can't reach out. And called Travis because it looked like Travis Scott 
is choose the sides as well too. And and you know they got an epic, they got you know some epic records together, preferably on YouTube that's gone over got over a billion uh a billion listens. So it's going to be very interesting to see how Drake can maneuver out of this. Like again, I'm not trying to say his career is over. He's already embedded himself in the culture, so he's not going anywhere anytime soon. But the thing is, when you don't have the, when you can't rely on a heavy, a heavy, uh, a heavy, um, a heavy backing that which Atlanta has given him, I'm going to say like the last seven, six years that he got during the whole Migos, during that whole uh, Dirty Sprite, uh, Fuchsia era that, uh, that he had, and now, now the fact that Young Thug is gone, I mean, and you got, again, no Metro, no Travis. How is Drake going to respond? And how is the mu- how is how is how is Drake's music gonna sound after not having these epic, uh, 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 not, uh, after not having these important pieces that's been uh, that's been really beneficial to his career moving forward? It's gonna be real inter- interesting to see. But thank you guys. I really do want to thank you guys for letting me on your platform. I love listening to you guys. Y'all keep up the good work, man. I really do appreciate it. All right, man, appreciate we appreciate you, you too, man. You so Thank much, you for calling Carl. in. All right. Will Those Drake, are great calls. Yeah, will Drake return to the Fortress of Solitude? Will he go back home and get 40? Yeah, and I will say, look, uh, we've heard two stories coming out about Drake. Some of the stories we hear is that, well, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. Call from... Hey, Coley, you're not live. What's up? What's good with you? How you doing? Hell yeah, nah. I mean, is that with friends? Yeah, yeah. You're you, here. You, you. What's up? Damn, what's the uh, question again, fool? I'm going to have it. My bad. <laughs> the, the, what was the question again, Prince? There is no question. Do you like Drake? Wait, who you, <laughs> man, who you look, rocking with? Man, Drake? look, bro. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm in the comments, bro. This town 901, fool, from Memphis, bro. We ain't, we ain't claiming dude like that, bro. Oh, shit. You funny. So, I guess you say, me. you say ain't no producer from Memphis going to be fucking with that nigga. Is that what you well, tell us? I always say that about, listen, Memphis people, listen. Man, look. Come on, talk to me. Come on, M-Town. <laughs> tell me what's good. Cause... I love this. You came, you called in to clear your city. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Man, dude, that Canadian, he, he need to do some Canadian ass shit. He need to keep it real. <laughs> And do some Canadian shit. Drake, if you listen, this this is this is the shit that you can't. This is the shit you have to battle with when you do yeah. all of this future. And I'm I'm down. I'm a king of the stuff. Remember, wait a minute. Matter of fact, how did you feel when he said on one of his songs, "When I'm in Memphis, I feel like I'm the king of Memphis." See there, <laughs> that man had boys in too. <laughs> Ah. Yeah, man. Ain't nobody bumping up Drake around here like that, man. So you That's you, all I want to say, man. Okay. okay, man, thank you. Thank you for calling yeah, in. I told you about the Memphis nigga straight to the point. Oh, He's friend. straight to the point. He said he's saying thought crimes, he ain't he ain't gonna get no Memphis, Tennessee beats. Caller. All right, what's good what's with up, you? What's up, y'all? Hey, what's up? Hey, let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Drake ain't really been making no hit. That stuff with twenty one Savage, bro. He's been trying to use Atlanta ever since his career. It looked like Lil Wayne put him in the game. Yeah. He never made an album with Lil Wayne. Explain mm. that to me. Uh oh. Say that and again. Then, wait, wait, like, wait. Say that yeah, again yeah. for the parishioners in the back. Yeah, he never made an album with Lil Wayne, but he been all up in these Atlanta people's face. And like you said, Ti Man pissed on him in the movie theater. Man, y'all done skipped over that. That man been he been fool guy guy in Atlanta. Man, like yes. they just using Drake, bro. Trouble use Drake. To get trouble, biggest song that he had, bro. Rest in peace, trouble. Come you, on, rest I, in peace, trouble. For, for, I have a question for you. Do you think it was a good idea though for the ATL rappers to use Drake as a lick when some of them Hell were already? Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of style. That is. You that got is. damn right. No, no, the reason why I'm mad yeah, is because you know when Migos first came out, they were already doing a lot of knocking music and stuff like that. Do you think Drake used them more, or did they use Drake more? Out of a relationship. Who do you think I'm Drake more out used of it? them because if you look at Drake's career, his whole career, if if you take everybody out of the equation and just leave Drake alone, he sucks. <laughs> I'm just That's keeping it real. All that. I'm a Scorpio, bro. Uh, I fuck with you, Prince. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah, but yeah. The, the the King Scorpio right now is future, dog. He's, oh, really? he's dogging Come out on. people, baby mama. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? Uh, yeah, it's I like. Yeah. 
you you can't you can't stop where future future has never had a downtime ever since he's um, premiered on the game, right. and and that and that and that's a microcosm of Atlanta rappers. Period. You right. They right. don't We're have no about, downtime yeah. unless they want. Yeah, Drake don't know nothing. He don't know nothing about the the DJ scream, the DJ holiday days. He don't know nothing about that. Well, the reason why I asked what, was it worth it because like we, I don't know what was the reasoning behind it. Of course, I'll say this before I say what I say. But we we lost takeoff. He was very important to Atlanta. He's very important to the Migos. Uh, you also had a situation where it seemed like you know possibly Drake was being two faced to other uh, Atlanta you know, rappers and a part of the scene. So that's why I'm asking, was it all worth it? Because, you know, you go look at it in 2024, take off, not here. You got all this drama let's take, with let's, Drake. Let's take it back to the take off thing, right? Yeah, go ahead. Now, who, who was, who was take off accused of being around when he got killed? Come on now. You know, he's out Mop there. With, he's up there with them, the historians. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And so Drake, he already he already off basis in in in, in the A town when you when you're standing up to these people you feel what I'm saying and get I'm in Texas so I mean it's nothing against Texas you feel me must love Texas but the whole thing about Drake all that Houston Atlanta Vegas type of vibe and Memphis he been using the South since the beginning I've never been a big fan of that mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying because I knew that this day was gonna come and like I said if you take all the South away from Drake. Complete, and even starting with Lil Wayne, yeah. he has no credibility. Well, just to add to your commentary, because I, I think I'm getting the feeling like even though Houston and Atlanta have had his beef, and even with this takeoff situation, you feel like Drake is a complete outsider. Why are you in the mix? Why are you in the business? Why are you promoting mob ties? Now you're going, you know, you're you're pouring mm. salt on the wound. Yeah. You're not even from around these places, and it's like you're making and a then, bad situation worse. And with sin, sin. Let me show you something else too. Yeah, I said something about the X X things. A lot of people don't even they gloss over that. That's yes. a major part of who Drake is. That is, it's very that's, huge. That's another Southern nigga, another a crazy one. People felt, but nonetheless, the South. Well, everybody think Floridians yeah. are crazy. Yeah, so. you know, no. shout out yeah. to Broward even, County. Even, even with dude, right? He had his thing with the Migos. He yes. he punched one of the Migos out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah I be did. forgetting about all this stuff. Yeah, and then you come on here if that boy wasn't lying with the lies. Hey, 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 hey. Listen, I'm gonna it's, be honest with you. Was it, look, you know about? I, I'll tell you this. Chad Butler, the great Chad Butler. I remember. Pimp C, man. Man, I found out Pimp C died. I was in the I was in the, I was in the flea market in Atlanta, and you know people was like, "Damn, that's crazy." And then you know some days went by. Even after everything he said about Atlanta, nobody got real disrespectful, but there still was always this energy there. And we all know if you if you in the third coast, you know that Atlanta has had a beautiful. Uh, frenemy in ship along with Houston. They've, they've worked with each other, but Man, there's also been competition now. The time. Prince, yes. I don't know if you know about the West Side, Adamsville, you know what I'm saying? Oh, come on Texas. now. Yes, bro, absolutely. Come on. Bro, yes, sir. We yes, love, sir. Bro, every, every artist, I don't care if you're from Bone Crusher, I don't yeah. care if it's Killer Mike, I don't care if it's T.I., I don't care right. if it's Dro. Every artist always got one Houston song, bro. Yes, absolutely. I'm the West Side of Atlanta. There you go. So don't tell. I, I know. I know. You feel me? Adamsville. So, let's go. So it's more like, bro. Like I said, I'm not a, a Drake hater, right? No. I'm, I'm, I'm the, I'm the artist formerly known as Dark Skin Drake. You feel me? So I just, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, I, I, I play with it. You feel me? Yeah. But the whole thing, right? Yeah. Is um that I always seen that he had that weenie type vibe about him, right? So. Then, like I said, if you if you just take his whole career and start from Wayne on down, right? And even you got you got to mention Baby, you got to mention Jay Prince. If you take all that away from him, I know what, what you mean. Drake? Come on, come on, man, Shout I know what you mean. listen. Let me tell you something. I flip you it in. Say, who is Drake? I flip, <laughs> I flip it in the other direction because this is what I said to Nigga Minaj. I said this. Look, I mean, yeah, you can make fun of uh, uh, the girl Megan talking about she talk country. She sound like dumb biscuits and grits and shit. But let's not be. Let's be real. You got your upstart through the South. You get what I'm saying? Oh yeah, for uh, Deb, yeah, for Miss yeah. Deb and uh, yeah. Waka Flocka and yeah. Gucci. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody, I ain't gonna lie. Everybody at first, we a lot of people knew Nicki Minaj was from Queens, yes, but they thought that she was an Atlanta artist. 
Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we got a lot of Atlanta artists that actually from New York for real. Waka well, look, Flocka. Waka Flocka. Cardi. Yeah, you so know yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not wrong about it. I, I will yeah. say this, though. I think Drake, I, listen, we're stating, I'm just stating this. I felt the poor politicking with the whole Atlanta takeoff at, uh, in Houston situation. Yeah, that was that was a bad that, look. That, that kind was of bad. made me fall off with him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was yeah, a bad I, look. He, look. And let look, me ask you this. Let me ask you this. If somebody did a compilation, because I'm curious now, if you took a compilation and you used all of Drake's songs without the South influence from Memphis to Houston to Atlanta, and he, Bro, he would not have a catalog. Bro. Can I say this too? I'm gonna say this he to you, homie. I'm gonna tell you just another side of the game. Let's not let's not forget the left coast. Remember, model DJ. Monster. Oh yeah, he used game. Yeah, he used game. He used a lot of Mac Dre stuff. Let me tell you something else. YG. A lot of people don't know about Mac Dre. Mac a Dre. A lot of people don't know that. Yes. Uh, Drake yes. used a lot of Mac Dre material out that west coast, and people don't know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people, like I said, didn't know Mac Dre. No, they didn't. It, you know, right? and it, the whole Thiz Nation movement. Come on now, all that man, and and and, and, and he been right there on it. But see, like I said, you know, that's just his uh, persona from probably being a Canadian. He, you know, he like you did say he's a real hip hop historian type of dude. Because at the same time, he'll go quote some Rakim and Nas and all that type of stuff too, right? Yeah. So he using all that, but I'm not faulting him necessarily. But I'm just calling out his flaws and his weakness. If he don't, if if he don't have the South, he we don't have nothing from him. All his biggest hits was influenced by South shit. I get it. he's walking around too sassy. You feel like he's walking around with no respect. Kiss my ass, bitch. Like it's it's too much of that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and all that gangster talk about extension. Man, bro, bro Drake shot, ain't that some crazy Drake shit? Drake would not. Drake wouldn't be a Florida artist. Drake wouldn't have never lasted in Florida, bro. Wouldn't, Drake wouldn't have did the things that Stenciano are doing. Stenciano used to be out there fighting. Nothing till he bucking. I'm a, I'm a, you feel me? I'm gonna put a curveball in this though. Would Drake mm -hmm. be at the position he is that where now these American Southern niggas want to? put him off because they feel he's been disrespectful but would he have been in this position if they didn't backstab each other at the beginning because like you said somebody in america allowed ex Tashiana to get killed drake can't allegedly if drake was a part of, we don't know but whoever was behind it let's say well, we don't we know the systemic we do know systemic systemic racism and all that that play a part in the american side right mm -hmm. because we listen listen our music right if you take out the violence of our hip hop music, hip hop don't exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was birthed out of violence as well. I know people want to be saying? like some hippie if, shit. If, but, if we say, okay, yeah. let's make a non-violent hip hop album, does that even exist? Oh, okay. I have a, a thing on that. I think it can exist, but I know it's been difficult as of late. You know, uh, well, J. Cole, Forest Hill Drive did well, but the biggest album that I know in history that that was like went diamond and it wasn't violent was mc hammer <laughs> but that was a long time oh, no, ago i thought you were gonna say lauren hill oh yeah well did lauren hill go diamond though the fuji's went diamond well, okay, so you're like, yeah, yeah. Now, Fuji, lauren hill definitely went right. diamond with that one also. Yeah. but but as a solo artist yeah. that was like no violence in it i don't count nelly because he had a little bit of violence in it but the person that was like completely no violence as a solo artist who went diamond was MC Hammer, and then if you talk about the last, just overall, yeah, Outcast. Okay, and we forget, we yeah. forget, we forgetting about the we forgetting about the greatest nonviolent rapper of all time, Kanye West. <laughs> this is true, Kanye. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, look, look. Let me, I'm, I'm just get getting real, bro. No, I'm, I'm a big Kanye bro. fan, so honestly, I yeah. like Kanye over Drake because if we take Drake, if we take Kanye out of Drake style, that's the other part. That's, that's the element, right? Because if okay, if we take the South out of Drake, he don't exist. But then if you take Kanye out of Drake, he really he he more he more influenced by Kanye than Lil Wayne. I'll say this: this this is what I'll say to, just to, just to put this out there, and I'm 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 gonna tell you where whether Drake knows it. Or not, this is actually where he looked the ugliest to the public, and I'm gonna be real with you because this is not what nigga. This is not what we've seen you who you are, right? Is all of the extentacion shit. It's just, it was, to me, I said, well, what are we doing here, nigga? Did you kill the little nigga or not? That's, <laughs> that, that, cause, see, because if, if I go around here 
putting my name on people's bodies talking about I caught this body and you hear me every time yeah man you know and then they were like yo bro what, 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 what does this mean hip hop though well, another niggas no. got bodies too well hold on just to say this though Kid yeah. Cudi got a couple bodies out there hey see <laughs> come on now right. this is what we talking about so here's the thing about it so this is what I thought was interesting about Drake now when your squad mob ties is implicated in the murder of Takeoff. Oh, yeah, that was funky. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Funky, Where are we man. going now? Yeah, I think the Takeoff. Where are we going now? Because, see, was, now, yeah, you see, because you was just big. I killed this nigga. I stuffed X in the trunk, and I got his body out again and shot it up again just to send a <laughs> message. And then when Takeoff <laughs> got murdered, the nigga went dark. He went silent. Oh, a lot of, but a lot of and, people and went. One, go one ahead, more go thing ahead. I got to ask y'all. Sure. One more thing. Hey, why do you think Little Wayne has had nothing to do with Drake for about ten years now. Well, Why Drake think kept sleeping movie? with uh, Lil Wayne girlfriends, um, but besides that, because he does that with a lot of people. Lil Wayne you know what? I honestly, <laughs> think, I honestly think Little Wayne could sleep with Drake girlfriends. I think it's opposite. Drake don't have that type of charisma where he got the type of female that's gonna be loyal like that. I don't see it, bro. Well, it was this man has been in the rap game that long and he ain't got not one female we can attach him to on a long term basis. Come on, bro. I mean, that's fair. I was just talking about the part where when Wayne was in prison and Drake rapped about it. I'm just saying, that's some backstabbing shit anyway. (laughs) So what I'm saying is, if he got out of prison, if he got out of prison and then remained and still got his same girl back and she told him Drake smashed, Drake probably couldn't smash no more. Well, I'm telling folks just for this, look, I'm going to be honest with you. If if it is think about when people got mad and they said Suge Knight killed Tupac even though that that's not necessarily true right he might have been responsible for keeping the golden calf running around wrestling in the dirt with some real south side crip killers but nonetheless though look how much people hated Suge Knight for the longest when they said you set Tupac up you killed him right I'm gonna mm-hmm. tell you something about Atlanta niggas they're not gonna be as vocal but they're thinking about it they've already talked about it you still screaming oh, yeah. mob ties. You're doing the mob ties sign. And mob ties was in the building when that man got his head blown off. Again, yeah. I'm not trying to be funny about this stuff, but it's like niggas don't read the room. I'm going to play. I'm going to play. And, and uh, let me ask you this, Prince. I don't know. You might know. And I didn't mean to cut you off, Miss Sin. No, no, go ahead. I'm going to ask you, though. Did Drake ever do a, a, a takeoff uh, memorial song or anything like that? Nope. No, he never did. I paid attention to that too. And that's kind of sketchy too, right? Yes. You got Gucci doing one, right? Oh, and uh, but Gucci then had a whole uh, out. Gucci had a whole we need to stop dissing a dead record. He went he went to Atlanta cemeteries. Right. <laughs> right. And and then on the, on top of that, right? He's screaming out free slime and all this old stuff. But did did, did young thug really fuck with Drake like that for real? No. Also, you know, it's a wonderful question because I mean, Future got a he got a song called "My Twin" on "We Don't Trust You." He's talking about Thugger. Mm-mm-mm. I'm just saying, Charlotte. I mean, it's look. You know how it is, but dog, can we read the room? But also, like <laughs> the thing about Drake though is like, can you survive independent? You can, but can you survive in that? industry without some form of mob ties look the bro came in get pissed on like let's be honest if jay prince was never behind drake he would have got hung out the window like wale the pissing on shit would have been worse (laughs) it would have been worse so so what choice maybe in the future it will change but what choice do any of these dudes had like posting finally got in out of the game so he was a terrorist for about over 20 years and I'm sure there's other, you know, bad guys involved, and there's gang members, and there's people snatching chains. And don't forget about Birdman. Birdman still got stake in them, too. Right. We, so we be giving Jay Prince way too much credit. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Jay Prince just got his name around Drake. I think Birdman actually getting paid off Drake. Well, That's you, heard what Birdman said. you heard what Birdman said. He says, me and Drake, we in business for life. Damn. <laughs> and that what I'm saying. Like, I don't so see Jay like Prince having that kind of deal with him. <laughs> Drake ain't going nowhere. <laughs> 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 hey man, I love the energy Back. too. By the way, man, so I appreciate you so much. You've been you've been on point, do, man. Do, do, Thank do. you so much. Yeah, man. I used to call y'all back in the day, man. We y'all, you know what I'm saying? We y'all was first coming out, bro. Oh, 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 this, oh, like sure. I said, it's formerly dark skin Drake. I went back to my street name though. You feel me? Because oh, yeah, I, I remember your avatar. I remember because you was you was in the stream the first around time we was doing the Drake and Pusha T stuff. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, all that. Yeah. Bro, you bought yeah. the Venus cycle. 
<laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> Good right, love, man. y'all, man. Keep doing y'all thing, man. What y'all on? About a million subscribers right now? I don't know. Right. I mean, we just be doing what we do, but you know how Walt Disney YouTube is, but we, we keep it moving, man. So as long as y'all keep showing up, we man, keep y'all, cooking. Man, all the people, man, like the like like this channel, man. Subscribe, man. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? Push them up there, bro, because they got a voice, man. You Maybe. feel me? The we'll Dark Times is the, the new is the new breakfast club, bro, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Better than that, because y'all bringing a real perspective. You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, it's all love, man. We do, appreciate do, do, do. you so much. Thank you. Take care, bro. Yeah, we appreciate you, man. I also just want to say this, because he brought up a great point that I didn't really get to say real quick. Yeah. You know, I love Yay music and some of the things he represents, awesome. too, but I'm not going to lie. Kanye been getting on my nerves lately. So I got to <laughs> wait till uh, he stopped getting on my nerves for me to talk to about Ye again. But call a name and where you're from. You're here with Sincere and Prince. Hey, what's up? It's uh, Chris, and I'm from Atlanta. Oh, oh we got an uh, ATL in this. Another 404 pimp in the building. Pimp, what's pimp, good? Pimp, what we got, man? Tell me, Tell me right now, what is the verdict below the perimeter? All right, so you got to look at it this way. You know, Atlanta is probably the worst place you can get, like, fucked over in because it's, like, everywhere in the South fucks with Atlanta, Mm -hmm. especially after, like, Katrina. You got a lot of New Orleans people here. Yes, you do. True. You know, Memphis. I mean, I grew up on, like, the east side and stuff. So, you know, a lot of people grew up on, like, Project Pack, Mm 36 and all that stuff. We always fuck with Memphis, you know, Mm -hmm. play a flock. Gangsta boo. Then, you know. Yeah, yeah, again. All that. Mm-hmm. So then, you know, Miami, that's like a hop and skip away. You know, Charlotte, I was born in North Carolina, but I've been in Atlanta since like 2000. So it's like, it's all connected. So ain't nobody going to help him out because he can't go to Houston, oh, even really? though I... he got, yeah, he can't go there because Travis and Meg there. And even if you cool with Bun B, Bun B is not going to choose <laughs> you over them. Like, no, he's not. Like Sauce Walker don't fuck uh, with Drake either. Yeah, there's a lot of Houston niggas that don't really fuck with him like that. Yeah, New Orleans. I mean, Birdman. He he like as much as he fuck with you, he know he could probably get him an artist out of Atlanta. So he was like, yeah, he probably ain't gonna fuck with you. He probably gonna if anything, he'll probably like politics for Drake. Mm-hmm. But yeah. that's gonna yeah. be he gonna be like it's yeah. gonna be more like money. Jay Prince yeah. can't help you out either. Uh, so you can't go to Memphis because, you know, St. Louis ain't too far from Memphis. And I think that's ain't that where Metro was born at. So, you know, the yeah. Midwest ain't fucking with you already. You know, Charlotte, uh, the baby can't help you. No. <laughs> you Not know, J. Cole in the same position you in. And then Miami ain't going to fuck with you either. So he and then the West Coast don't mess with you because they going to side. You know, they going to side with Kendrick. So it's like. Only place he can really go is New York, and who they're gonna really mess with you? That's gonna help you win this battle because you're gonna have to do the drill. Yeah, ain't nobody yeah, in New York. They well, gonna play. well, just yeah, keep it real so, with you, play. He well, first of all, uh, Future and Metro got a dead New Yorker talking all over the album. Prodigy, exactly. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. So you know, somebody had to co-sign on that. So with yeah. Havoc, and you know, Havoc cool with everybody damn near. Like, if it's niggas, Legends. Eating, they ain't gonna mess with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Prodigy's so, one of my favorite MCs. So I mean, I was I'm not gonna lie, I was happy to hear the sound bites all over the album. I know, because I was trying to figure out who that I was like, yo, who is this New York? I was like, oh shit, that's Prodigy. I was like, oh, okay, so yeah. <laughs> Bro, so it's kinda like he he iced out. Cause if he really yeah. can't go nowhere. Cause where you gonna go? Cause so you're gonna have to use forty beats and you gonna have to rap rap and unless you like sit there record yourself rapping this. <laughs> ain't nobody gonna think you you wrote it yourself. And so I agree. It's Forty's like, gonna have to be inventive too, yeah. because like there were some sounds that you know he produced, he did a good job on, but it's something very tiring about Forty's energy. And you tell them genuine samples. <laughs> Shit, nigga, if we get like, real you fucking gonna... genuine samples. <laughs> it's mine. I was here. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you know what we what we gonna get this time that's gonna shock people though. Let me, let me ask you a question real quick. Yeah. And what, what you say you was on the east side of Atlanta, right? Yeah, I I got a question for you because I you know I ain't had a chance to get back out there. What, okay. What what for you talking with your friends out there, man? What's the perspective of somebody like Drake blowing through with mob ties in Atlanta? Like what you know? Because I know you hear some of the conversations around there around the time of Takeoff's death. 
All right, so you got to look at it this way, right? Right. Take off with with the Migos and, you know, and they were sucking with Gucci. Yes. So. That's that another nigga that's good. iced out, too. Yeah. That's a great point. That's another yeah. nigga that's iced out. Because we, like, we, we, we hear no more collabs. No. And then you got to look at it, too. You know, the, the like, T.I., all them, they ain't really going to help you. Like, he kind of fucked up because, like, everybody like takeoff <laughs> the, yeah. the radio people is like yo we we know like you see the interviews they be like yo my favorite one take off and take off is the, the perfect nigga killed. yeah because yeah, he don't he don't do nothing i mean he might did something but it's he don't talk so it's like shit <laughs> yeah so you that's the one that you know offset if it was offset you know i ain't wishing it on them but it's like i don't know mean the other like, two are more shit yeah. startery yeah they're more shit startery. yeah yeah but takeoff don't do nothing so he died and then so you fucked up all that shit so it's just like you gucci man can't help you out and gucci ain't gonna fuck with you because he fucked with future and future from the east side too and then he go back to old atlanta with outcast and then yeah he just fucked all the way up well, and just like, to, i don't see how he's gonna do it. yeah just to add to your point like even when we saw the disturbing footage of what happened to uh takeoff he wasn't doing nothing there too he's just walking so it's like yeah. to your point Take yeah. off, don't do nothing. And when he got killed, he wasn't doing nothing. So to your to your point is like it really puts a bitter taste in people's mouths. Yeah, that's what made me kind of like yeah. I, I I felt like this. This is what I felt like. I I really felt like Drake didn't have no gauge of the culture when he was like you know blowing through there. He to the point of our other player that called in former dark skin Drake. He didn't do a public tribute song to Take Off because we and it would make sense because we seen him. With the Migos, you know, walk it like I talk. He was acting like he was the fourth yeah. member. He was the fourth nigga, and we yeah. didn't, we didn't see nothing like that, right? We didn't get nothing, yeah. no interviews, no no thoughts. We didn't have a fucking Instagram post, but everybody was doing that shit, right? But then yeah. the crazy Jay part Prince is when he came. Shit too. Yeah, like and then, that. Yeah, oh, like, great point yeah. when Jay Prince uh, Senior came out banging on Offset. A million dollars uh, worth of game. Yeah, he was yeah, on a podcast. You know, still talking about, with, you know, a bullet might hit you in the back of the head. And we like, what uh, the fuck? Shut up, nigga. Yeah. You wasn't there yeah. for your bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, like, I know growing up, listen, I know Atlanta. I know yeah. niggas will watch all that shit. They're not going to say anything, but they registered everything. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Pretty so, much. And it's, yeah, because yeah, so, it's like, you know, and because, you know, it's a lot of immigrants here, too. And it's like, you have some who, like, and Drake kind of remind me of some of them. Like, you have some where they've been here most of their life, and they're, like, first, second generation. Right. And, like, they cool, but because their family is from, like, overseas or whatever, they going to miss the ball on something. And then, you know, yeah. they get roasted or whatever, and, you know, sometimes they be like, all right, I get it, I get it. It's, it's just a cultural thing. And then some of them, you know, they'll just, I They're feel like I feel up. like Drake completely missed the ball. I don't even care about the whole yeah. mob ties camp because it's not. I'm not interested. But I felt for him, who has always yeah. been in the room with them. I think culturally, it was. I said that's the first time I see him really absent minded. Well, culturally, it it hurt the J Prince family too. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, with the chains being snatched and the stuff with NBA Young Boy, there was a few goofy moments, but people still had a lot of respect for J Prince. I think when Takeoff yeah. got killed, it was like cold water put on all, a lot of them. It was like, yo, you know, this, we thought this guy was measured and yeah, you know, people are blaming, him. you know, of course he wasn't there. J Prince's sons were involved, uh, you know, by being there, but people thought that his kids would have more, you know, or be more organized than that. It's one thing is, is if it's the uh, jewelry guy who, again, rest in peace, he shouldn't have died either. But yeah. when, when people see that you don't have respect for a major superstar, which is a part yeah. of a superstar group because Takeoff is a superstar because he's a part of a superstar group. Amigos is global. That Drake's and, career benefited from. Right, and the fact that he was treated like a like a dollar, a dollar store uh, rodent and head got blown off like that. A lot of people are still confused about what uh, what, happened? what happened. Yeah, yeah. And Drake was tone deaf. Yeah. I, I really believe that whole tone deaf shit uh, also bleeds into what we're dealing with right now. Um, but yeah. yeah, man. So, what, what did you think about? Did, did you have a chance to check out the "We Don't Trust You" album with uh, Metro Boomington and, and Future Hendrix? So I listened to about half of it because yeah. um, 
I was heading out. So the part that I did here, it was it was very impressive. Like Metro is, yeah, you could just hear it. It's just like it's that time. The summertime is around. It was like they know this is the time. Everybody gonna be playing this shit all summer. It's Future and Metro. Yeah. Like yeah. So Listen, yeah, it's hard. So well, like we might be getting yeah. them surgical summers, and it, it, the surgery may be performed at Grady. Yeah. Oh well, he ain't gonna live then, bro. So like, <laughs> I know. Yeah, they say well, you know when they send niggas to die, they send them to Grady. I mean, I'm sorry. Shouts out to the people that work at Grady, but y'all know y'all reputation. Like niggas, be like please, bro, don't send me to Grady. Shout it, man. <laughs> like, yeah. like, yeah. So, but pretty much, just like Drake, man. I don't know what he gonna do, man. He. He got to respond, but he's just going to have to come up with something in Toronto. You better get some of them, like, Jamaican, you know, other West Indy people to help you out. Yeah, no, you're right, because before you let yeah. you, we let, before we let you go, you know, we were saying how Memphis could help him out, but we had, uh, you know, Memphis come call into Thought Car said, fuck no. They said, don't put <laughs> no, them on us. That's so, always, that's so, always Memphis, I feel like. Yeah, it's always the only person niggas. that can help him is Yo Gotti, and Yo Gotti got like a yeah, team cut are... curse after him, so it's just like <sighs> shit. That I mean, that I like, lie. look, bro, you don't go there. Do. You know, that's what tune so though. Don't shit. do that. <laughs> Gotti, Gotti do got the Yo, Yo Gotti do got the the mummy chasing his big headed ass. Yeah, yeah so he got yeah. a lot on his plate. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for calling and, in, man. No problem. All right, shouts out to the uh, ATL, the ATLians in the chat too. I know y'all talking, man, because uh, second second generation uh, Dungeon family members out here uh, letting it be known to future. I mean, letting it be known to Drake that we don't trust you. We don't, we don't trust, trust you, trust you we don't no tr more. I'm going to take a few more calls, ladies and gentlemen, 903-600-0530. We definitely appreciate the pace and the calls have been excellent so far too. People sharing their thoughts, you know, about everything. But... Look, look, this is what Sin and I talk about. I know people are being cute, and I get it. And I understand why somebody like academics just like tricks my nigga. Because, you know, it's kind of like, you know, they both, you know, coming in at, you know, America at 11 and 15 and shit. And they love this thing called hip hop. And they really love this thing of street gangster lores. And then they're tone deaf culturally. You know, I just felt, listen, I'm going to be honest Look with you. Look at Strategy King gloating. It's the moment he's been waiting for. Look at he's hoping Drake fall. Look at him happy in the chat. Like, bro, that's, it's, you going too far, dog. <laughs> All right, now. Um, hello, now. You, you, you're live with Thought Crimes. What's good with you? Hey, this is Carmen. Carmen, what's up? Carmen. Hey. <laughs> I wanted you guys to check out um, Elliot Wilson's IG page and look at the stuff that Drake's liking. I'm okay. sorry, Elliot blocked us. <laughs> oh shit, that's true. I was going to look, but he did block us. Well, let me let me go look at a different right. account to oh, see oh, what he's posting. You okay. said on Instagram? Yeah, his IG story about him not taking Kendrick serious. <sighs> Here we go with this bullshit, Carmen. How do you feel? How do you feel about him being Zach from Saved by the Bell right now? You know I don't like Drake. <laughs> I never liked Drake. <laughs> so he's on there. He's responding uh, through social media posts. Okay, I see yeah, it. You see the post? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Post, and then somebody said on another, I don't know the page, but it's like some Toronto page that his producers are liking shady tweets about Future and Kendrick Lamar. Oh, my God. Are we like gonna, some we, sick we, something page. Man, what are we doing this? This mean girl shit? What is this? I, I don't like you. You, I don't like you. Swing. You see the post that he liked? Yeah, 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 Sin got it up right now. You know, she she's And then zooming. if you look in his IG story too, he posted it in there. Okay. What the hell I want Drake out of here. <laughs> 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 I want him gone. Yeah, ho. Wow. How, how do Cali niggas feel about him right now? I never, we don't really we don't fuck with Drake like that. He's phony. You know what's funny about that? I have not heard Drake on a really slapping Cali instrumental in a long ass time. Yeah, I think YG was that the last time yeah, he was on so. when he was on tracks with YG a long time ago. And then he got sued by rapping Forte for damn near rapping the nigga's whole verse. <laughs> but so, I like the the only thing I can say is I like the strategy that Kendrick did because I felt like Drake was. I think he just got like you said earlier. He got too ignorant and he has so much power. I felt like he was taking advantage of people and especially with Meg bullying her and 
coming at her. So to me, it looks he looks like a pussy if he comes at her and not the men. Ooh. So I felt like he was gonna. I felt like if Kendrick didn't come out, I felt like Drake was gonna come at Meg. You know, it's you know, funny it's like you he, say that. He was liking all this shady shit and then the whole Tory shit. He was just being weird. I feel and I know like some of that had to do with the Jay Prince shit. No, you're right. I actually think that uh, Future also was trolling him with that because he had a track on that We Don't Trust You where he was talking about bagging chicks like Meg the Stallion. Yeah. And I do think that at this point people would find it corny because you like doing all this passive aggressive stuff towards her. Mm -hmm. But like, bro, like come out on a track and get at Kenny. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, don't, I just don't think he... So that's listen. the only play that I like. Okay. Yeah, look, I, I think he's just... To I think he's culturally tone deaf because first of all, Bro, who can man? I ain't getting up on a microphone and dissing Meg the Stallion. What, what's the point off that? You know what? I mean, you know who I'm gonna square off with. It's definitely gonna be Kendrick Lamar. Shit, I'm, I'm looking. I think Kendrick has something in the cut already. I think he's waiting. You come on, Carmen. You know damn well he did. He didn't cut his hair <laughs> off. His ears are pointy again. He's come on now. That nigga ready. Yeah, and his team is definitely watching because people all over Twitter, like Chubbs and other people, they're just. They're all over different IVs liking weird shit. I mean, my thing is like, years ago, everyone made fun of Meek Mill because he's like, yo, get your ass off Twitter. We were all telling him to get his ass off Twitter. He didn't do it. And we know the history he lost against back to back. Ass off Twitter now, and Diddy. Now, years later, Drake ass is all up on Twitter and Instagram. And you it's see, like. He's, uh, he's Twitter fingers. Yeah, I mean, like. <sighs> It'll be interesting though. No, Carmen, I, I definitely thank you for the update. You know, I didn't know he was all on uh, social media, uh, liking quote unquote, as you said, shady posts. Yeah, he's been liking stuff. Like when um, what's that? What's that girl that hangs out with the mob type people with 1601, the Meg's ex friend? Oh, uh, oh. Uh, Kelsey. Kelsey, yeah. Yeah, like when she was, you know, when that interview whatever came out, he was liking a bunch of shady shit about what? Meg. Why, and why I noticed, is he, it was like it was just weird why 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 okay here's my thing about it because uh, you know drake is weird to me i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you because he does things and i don't like to stereotype genders i really don't but he, sometimes he does things that it just it feels like he would go in the room where women are and start shit with the women within the group you know like when i saw him he said uh he said, shouts out to Megan. And he says, no, I'm not talking about that one. I says, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I don't know what that's about. But, yeah, he's been weird. But, yeah, but, a lot of people out here, I don't know. He, certain people like him, but the majority of people really don't play his music. Before, Sorry, we, let you, before we let you uh, go, Carmen, I just want to ask you a, a quick question. How do you feel uh, with Kelsey indirectly vindicating Meg when she said it wasn't over? Uh, us sleeping, both sleeping with uh, Travis Scott, even though everybody initially said that's why they Travis Scott. I mean, uh, Tory Lanez. <laughs> <laughs> Tory Lanez, <laughs> Tory Lanez my bad. <laughs> Tory Lanez. What? Oh, I think the real, to be honest, <laughs> I think it? the real fans already knew because she got paid off. Yes, she did. We knew what was going on. She got paid off, and she was being silent because she's connected to Mob Ties, right. which is Drake's people, Jay Prince, and all them. So that's the connection. Like she wasn't going to help her out. I they wanted you. her to lose. You know, I think that was the whole connection. They wanted her to lose because why were they so angry that she lost? And she was still their artist before she got away from them. Well, you saw all the anti make people was like, fuck you, Kelsey. We thought you was going to confirm the, the, the rumors that were unfounded. <laughs> I think all of that actually just came okay. up because, uh, uh, to Carmen's point, yeah, she done uh, eloquently. Look, I think a lot of that dustiness, extra shit that went on with Megan had a lot to do uh with drake and then of course you got academics who's a spokesperson for drake you know going in every night and i think it just created well, this strange jay atmosphere prince. yes y'all know she sued jay prince right and she was going to expose him allegedly from what i heard they believe that 1501 was allegedly funneling money and that's why they settled with her because well, you know. she was going to expose them for what they were doing with that label well you know come on now come on now you know what time it is so hey so they let her go yeah <laughs> She got her money. She did. She won. Thank you, Carmen, for calling in. Yep. All right. Shout out to the West Coast, too, by the way. Uh, look, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Sin has pulled up. Thank you, Carmen. Man. Sin pulled up that uh, Drake is on social media. See, he's doing exactly what he's not supposed right. to Thank be doing. Thank you, Carmen, for the information. Yeah. So he up there like it. Come. Oh. 
Drake, you doing sassy online shit. Like, come on, my so nigga. So that means you're going to lose, nigga. If you're doing that, that means you're going to lose. You're going to lose that. Uh, any last call? Anybody, <laughs> anybody else yeah. want to call up? This your time to do it before we wrap up the show. Yeah, we If you want to uh, call in right now, we'll take one or two more calls. 903-600-0530. 903-600-0530. So Drake is online right now uh, liking different posts. You know, and, I, you know, he, he might as well. Shouts out to Impressive. But he might as well be in the comment section of uh, some of these people online as well. You know, so, I mean, this is crazy right now. So, I mean, it, just, it doesn't prove anything. Okay. Drake is going to have to get in the booth. But Strategy man, King is like, Kendrick already won. <laughs> I know. I know Strategy King. <laughs> just, Strategy King, is he's calling him Drake. Listen, it is what it is. And maybe, listen, maybe Drake is just, maybe it's just time to wrap this up. You know, it was a good run, wasn't it, Sin? It was a good run. It was a good run. Let's give him. Let's give a five for Drake. Yeah, there you go. It was a good. It was a good run, brother. If you, you know, if you're online and you're just telling people this is how I'm going to respond, let alone Elliot Wilson, because Elliot Wilson swore to God Jay Z defeated Nas. Last nigga. And more chewing for your head top. So watch how you speak on my name. You know. That's the last nigga you want. I agree. You shouldn't be talking to Elliot. You need to talk to people who won battles, yeah, not people who lost. Because in Elliot Wilson's head, Nas lost against Jay Z in the battle, in the MC battle, that is. So. This is Castillo Stags. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, also, too, by the way, Sin, did you want to tell them about uh, what we was going to be having for our Patreon, too, by the way? Okay, guys, thank you for everybody who called in on our Patreon. We do have exclusive conversations about this certain things more in the dark end and also with astrology that we can't get into uh on on youtube but we will be getting into it of course on our patreon so everybody make sure you go over there check out our patreon support support the thought crimes movement support the think tank movement there's a lot of shady shit going on, not just in the hip hop game, but the in politics. politics. Yes. People yes. try to play us on the left and the right. Yes. We kind of um, understanding what Candace and Tucker Carlson and Elon Musk and their play is. No. You could do your play, but leave black people out of it. That's the only problem I have. I don't get. I don't care what dark demented setup you have for. I just know where it's going, but don't try to drag people, black people, in to be no no fucking secondary class citizen to no fucking group you don't move from one burning building to another so do you think we'll talk uh, about that too on patreon do you think what's going on when drake has to do with ados and fba it, it has to do with yay and candace and them it has to do with the fact that uh uh, uh he shares some of the same uh makeup as some of the people who runs the music industry that people let run the music industry oh yeah also to update you guys look no i'm not talking about whether nods where you guys felt he won the long time war with his career what elliot felt is that he felt ether was weaker than takeover that's what i'm speaking about the the actual battle itself we're not talking about long term whose wife looked the best whose wife got the bigger name no, we're talking about when the battle happened with Long the MCs. Long time they both won. I mean, in life. So that's what you. That's what. That's what I'm talking about when it came to that. So, but we'll see. Um, I guess y'all gonna have to. I, I. You know, I think that's probably why people. I think that's why people are running towards J. Cole because I think maybe some of you Negroes, you lost tribe niggas. Maybe you guys feel like you're gonna actually get a response from J. Cole versus Drake. I mean, we'll see. We love you all. We really appreciate oh, yeah, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so thank okay. you. Be, be more part two to uh, when we covered uh, who was going to win, uh, and in the charts of uh, Kendrick Lamar, Future, and everything we did concerning the hip hop dynamic of it. But there's this astrological sense to it. They all use it, including you hear it all over Future's album. We cover that uh, with Be More. Be More is going to be again back in the building on that one, that particular stream. She did a fantastic stream. A lot of you all watched it. Uh, you can sign up to Patreon right now, and then you can actually hear part one, and we'll be dropping part two very, very soon. So that will be on our Patreon, everybody. Support the movement. We are demonetized here on Thought Crimes, but that ain't going to stop us from giving you that fresh, real hip hop perspective from the streets <laughs> all the way to the suburbs from. The United States to the UK to Canada to South Africa to Ghana to Mexico. Where the fuck you at in around the world that loves hip hop and hip hop culture? Shit. We're gonna be here where hip hop was birthed. 
Here in the United States, right. black Americans. There you go. Love you all. Y'all take care. Peace. Yeah, Peace. Ho. I saw the check, nigga. Huh? Babylon and generates P8 with clear sense, uncommon. Can you see straight? Freeze frames by the blocks in the deep state. Deep fake DNA, I'm mobbing with the think tank. <laughs> in the block with the guards where the beats done. What we'll makes it lot for a log? Get your beats stung. Freeze frame, make it hard for bombers roll through. That hating energy get bought for QB phone. You work a third of the day to get the shame. Yeah, we got just like the murderers and rapists that you claim.
to say and what not to say. Don't bother me.